And good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our presentation of Unified Soccer as we talk to you this afternoon from the Connor Gymnasium. Pete Lamoureux along with Steve Boyle. And Steve, we've had the pleasure of working together on a lot of broadcasts, but uh, this may be the most special one of them all. Well, you're not kidding. But this the excitement of seeing these kids uh, from all around the state. And uh, this is a, such a big deal for them and for the work they've been doing. So it's, uh, it's a real honor for me to be able to be here and just uh, watch as they participate in, in a sport that they also clearly love. A little background about this. This is actually the 25th anniversary that the CIAC has teamed up with Special Olympics, uh, West Hartford in particular, seven consecutive years. Tom Varengia, great man in town, as you know, uh, started the program from the West Hartford perspective. He has given way a little bit to Kerry Massaro, who's the head coach now, but Tommy's still involved and uh, it's been a great project so far. Well, it was, it's interesting because Tommy was one of the guys who got me back into coaching here in town. I had been doing track and field and he knew I had a basketball background and he was generous enough when he knew he needed to get a hip replacement in 2004 to ask if I would take over a team that he knew was going to be very good. I hope I didn't botch it up too much, but um, I, I'm indebted to Tommy for a lot of reasons, never mind that piece, but the service he does for kids in town, the way he supports his fellow coaches, and just watching him interact here today with, with the student athletes. Uh, he's a hero to a lot of, a lot of people, including me. So. Uh, and the fact that Carrie Massaro is now involved. I know she earlier this week was coaching against my good friend Scott Ferguson, but it puts it all in perspective. We get so caught up in high school sports. This is really what it's about. And what's it say about these folks like Carrie Massaro and Tom Varengia who have jobs, they have other teams, they have uh, families, and they still devote time to these kids? It really is a special statement about them as well. well coaches are servants, and, uh, and these guys model that. You know, they're servant leaders, and... Uh, in this profession, we're at the service of children. And, you know, I'll speak for them because I know it's the kind of people that they are, but they will honestly say that they get more from the kids than they feel like they're giving to the kids because that's the kind of people they are. Yeah, absolutely so. Good point by Steve Boyle. Uh, we're waiting on just a couple of teams to show up. We're going to have the opening ceremonies, and it's modeled a lot like the Olympics. And then we're going to begin soccer action sometime around 3.30. And uh, it'll be 16-minute games. And a lot of the youngsters that are out there actually uh, will be a three-on-three -three competition. But they'll also have special volunteers who are out there. They're uh, called their supporters. And uh, good for them, a lot of the kids to volunteer as well. Yeah, it's those situations where you, you want kids to be able to fully participate in the capacity that they can, yeah. so they get the supports in the way that they can. So you can hear the excitement brewing now. Athletic director uh, Jason is in the center now, uh, trying to calm down all the uh, participants, and uh, everybody's lined up for the parade at this point. That's great, great stuff. And we'll, we'll defer to Jason, and here are the opening ceremonies. Jason Siegel, Athletic Director at, at Hall and Connards, welcoming his uh, constituents from West Hartford. Uh, these are the student athletes from Hall West Hartford. We'll go outside to start the opening ceremonies. Yes, exactly right. Following Connard and Hall High School, we have the Berlin Unified Team. Berlin next to be introduced. And again, we have a variety of teams that are uh, represented here today. Bloomfield uh, would be next, but uh, Bloomfield a little late in arriving this afternoon, Stu. Yeah, Bloomfield has Actually, now moved to the back of the parade, but they are in the gym, so it's terrific. Bristol well represented, both Central and Eastern high schools here this afternoon. So we're here at Conard, but just a little bit to our west and maybe a little bit south. We got Berlin and Bristol are both representing a large contingency from Bristol, as you can see. 
And next will be the northernmost participants from Enfield. Next, we'd like to welcome the athletes from Enfield. This has such a wonderful feel to it, Pete, just uh, representing their town with their banners. And when they watch Special Olympics or the Olympics, they're, they're, they're going to feel like they're participating in such a similar way. So it's a wonderful experience for these kids. Yeah, it really is, Steve. And yeah, something yeah, that they'll yeah, remember for the rest of their lives for absolutely, sure. Absolutely, absolutely. Middletown High is next. And their contingent. With the athletes of New Britain High School, please make their way down. And here come the New Britain High School Hurricanes. And New Britain is a very proud sports town today. George Springer, one of their own, named the World Series most valuable players as Astros prevailed in Game 7 last night against the Dodgers. I was just thinking the same thing, Pete. Now, a lot going on about hard-hitting New Britain today and, yeah. and the fact that uh, the, the UConn alum from New Britain uh, did such a great job and in such a wonderful World Series. I'm sure these New Britain kids are proud of him as well. Oh, no doubt about it. As he would be of them. Five home runs he hit in that uh, World Series. Newington, the latest to be announced. Newington is a border of West Hartford, so they had one of the shortest commutes to be here. Yeah. Steve, the Portland High School team, the first year of participation for them, and they were quite excited when I talked to their coaching staff yesterday. Again, look, look at the size of the crowd, and if we're not doing something like this, these would be kids who wouldn't have the chance to participate in such an event. So when you hear about first year, and you yes. hope that we're doing this 20 that years from now, and these kids are Hill. still participating. Rocky sure. Rocky Hill. The Terriers next to be introduced. And to close out our team of athletes, the athletes from Bloomfield High School. The Warhawks of Bloomfield. A little Bloom late arriving, but great that they made it. Exactly. Bloomfield is in the house wearing the bright orange, and we'll be able to spot them easily throughout the day. So welcome to Bloomfield. Welcome, everyone. I hope you have a great day and a lot of fun. At this time, I would ask everyone to remain standing as I'd like to invite Conard High School senior Maggie Noble to the floor to sing today's national anthem. Again, that's West Hartford Athletic Director Jason Siegel doing a great job on welcoming everybody. Now we'll prepare for our national anthem. Yes, sir. Maggie Noble, an excellent job with her rendition of the national anthem. That was special. And uh, just the attentiveness of, of all the kids here, and they were mesmerized. It was absolutely wonderful. So good, good for her. And uh, So here's George Sinet of the uh, CIAC, who's going to join us right after his presentation. That's terrific. For the great program that they run here in Unified Sports, but also for the fact that they are hosting this tournament. Connor High 
high school have a, of all your honor, of all high schools, the two schools have contributed a great deal to Special Olympics Connecticut. We not only have this tournament in soccer every fall, but in the springtime, the West Hartford schools also offer an elementary day on a Saturday out on their field. And the kids in Special Olympics, the kids in unified sports really get a great deal out of all of this. At this time, I'd also like to introduce to you someone from Special Olympics Connecticut who has a special message for all of you regarding fundraising. And that is Jeff and Indiana. Jeff? Thanks, George. Uh, I'd like to echo George's thoughts and thank Connor High School for hosting uh, the tournament today for all the athletes and unified partners. Uh, I'm here to speak about the Penguin Plunge. I don't know how many uh, athletes and unified partners have heard about the Penguin Plunge. I know Conrad and Hall have uh, plunged before. Rocky Hill High School signed up this year to plunge. Uh, just wanted to give you the information. Uh, any money that you raise, you get 50% of that money back to go to your building. So you can use that money to buy a new or new jersey, have a pizza party at the end of the year, any way you see fit, you get half that money that you raise back to your program. So it's a great opportunity for funding for your team and for all the athletes part of your team. So we have five plungers across the state. Our first one is January 28th in Farmington. Then we have one in Middletown on March 3rd, one in Winstead on March 3rd, one on March 1st in New London, and then wrapping up April 7th in Westport. I'll be here for a while. If anyone has any questions, I have uh, information and guidelines for all the coaches if they're interested in signing up. But good luck to all the athletes in the partners, and it's not just for the athletes in the partners, it's for the family members and friends too. So anyone that's interested, just come see me. I'll be in the front of the room. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. So once again today, we want to see some good competition. Most importantly, the, the trademark of unified sports is the great sportsmanship that's shown. And I think we'll see a lot of that here today. Good luck and have a great day. Thank you, George. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you very much. At this time, if I could please have Sarah and Nina from the Connor and Hulse team to come out and lead all competitors in our oath. Athletes are asked to repeat each phrase of the oath with our oath leaders. Let me win. But if I cannot win, let me be brave in the endeavor. Or well the done. attempt. One. Well done. Yes. Lena, one of the 12 athletes from both Hall and Connard represented here today, Steve. And she's a great kid, also a three-sport athlete, soccer, basketball, lacrosse. So it's nice to see the multi-sport athletes out here supporting these kids in the middle of their own seasons. Absolutely so. Field two is in the middle of the gymnasium over the center court here, over the big C. Athletic Field director Jason Siegel laying the groundwork for the different fields. All the teams, there are 10 of them. There'll be four games going on simultaneously. Each game is 16 minutes long. Well, there's a lot that goes into the back end of organizing an event like this to try to make it be fluid and feel safe to the children that are participating. Uh, so the, the feeling here is that of safety and uh, organization and coordination amongst the teams, camaraderie, and the fact that Mr. Sinnott spoke about sportsmanship. You can sense that already. Sure. Sure. Oh, absolutely so. So it's going to take a few minutes before the actual games commence at the four different venues. We're hoping to have George uh, Sinet join us from the CIAC. He made those nice opening remarks to kick things off here. And the athletes are all smiles. Uh, we might be able to get Mr. Sinet over here in a second. Uh, that's the contingency from uh, Middletown walking in front now and, and Bristol Eastern going to have a, have a seat. They are uh, going to wait further directions as the fields get set up and the participants look to get prepared for um, the first contest of the day. Pete, I'm going to hand this over to Mr. Sinnott. Yes. Thank you, Steve. Just want to introduce George Sinnott to Steve Boyle, a Hi, Steve. great longtime coach from uh, West Hartford. Good to meet you. George from the CIAC, 
25 years the anniversary since 1992 when the CIAC and Special Olympics uh, began the partnership and what a terrific partnership it's been to evolve over the years. It's been absolutely fantastic Pete. We're uh, right now we have uh, as you said it started in 92. Today we have 95 percent of all the public high schools in Connecticut have unified sports programs and it's part of their athletic program. What are the main changes that you've seen as this program has evolved over the years, George? One of the things that's happened in the last three years, actually four years, is that I went to the commissioners of all of the, the conferences in Connecticut and asked if they would take some ownership of the unified programs in their conferences, and they all came forward with tremendous enthusiasm. The athletic directors now have brought together conference tournaments where teams not only participate in our tournaments that the CIAC sponsors, but they also participate in their own conference tournaments for unified sports. And in addition to that, conferences are developing regular interscholastic schedules within the conference where one team plays against another. So the net result of all of that is that the kids are playing a heck of a lot more sports today than they've ever done before when the program first began. And that's terrific. Talk about also just the whole concept of inclusion. It really is a, a fantastic concept. And Steve Boyle and I were talking before how after today, you hope that moving forward and into their adulthood that these uh, fine young athletes continue to play sports and be included in things. That's an excellent point, Pete, because the purpose that the purpose of unified sports is to get kids to work together, to play together, to understand differences. We have that in our schools with, inter, uh, with the inclusionary classes. However, I found that when the school bell rang at 2 o'clock, that was the end of inclusion. With unified sports, we use athletics as a venue and a vehicle to continue that inclusionary process. And what we have seen over the years is just an, a remarkable um, integration of kids with and without disabilities. And the kids, I would say, that are the non-disabled, the non-disabled kids get as much out of this program, and in many cases, much more out of the program than the kids with the disabilities. And it really is wonderful of them to volunteer their time and to help, and a lot of them are off the different teams here at uh, Conard and Hall High Schools and all the other high schools throughout the state that participate. That's correct. And we have found that uh, many of these kids who serve as partners in our program go on to do work in college and graduate and become involved in special education programs because of the experiences they've had in unified sports. Speak a little, if you could, about uh, the coaches as well. Uh, we're very proud of Tom Varengia and Carrie Massaro here representing uh, the town of West Hartford. Steve Boyle and I talked about uh, how they have their regular jobs, they have their other teams, but they still give of themselves. They meet every week, uh, once a week at night uh, with these kids. Really says something about those special individuals as well. Absolutely. The, the success of this program and the sustainability of the program falls on the shoulders of the coaches. And I'm proud to say that over the years, I think there has only been two high schools that have started unified sports that have not been able to sustain it. Out of those two, one of the high schools has come back again this year. That sustainability is due in large measure to the dedication of the coaches and the work that they do within their schools with these kids. Jason Siegel, of course, the athletic director here. Talk about him, his dedication to putting this on today, but also talk about Marie Siegel, his mom, who's been one of the longtime advocates and coaches involved. I had an opportunity uh, to serve with Marie uh, at Berlin High School. I was a uh, principal there for a number of years before retiring and Marie had the program while I was principal and the work that she has done with this program and she has been the head coach throughout the entire period. I think she's probably been coaching close to 18 years and that's just remarkable. Jason uh, has certainly seen the fruits of unified sports because of the work that his mother has done so that when we were looking for someone to host the CCC conference tournament. We went directly to Jason, and he, uh, he didn't hesitate a moment. He just took this right on himself. Basketball, uh, we understand, will be hosted by Glastonbury uh, in the wintertime. That's correct. We have 
Uh, basketball is the largest sport that we have, and um, I believe we run, the CIAC runs 24 tournaments in addition, to, as I said before, to the conference tournaments and then the interscholastic play. Glastonbury is one school that hosts uh, a tournament in basketball, uh, but we have, I believe, 23 others in addition to that, spread all over the state of Connecticut from, from Danbury to uh, Plainfield. That's terrific. Well, George, thank you so much for a few moments. You're very Con welcome. Continued success and uh, best of luck uh, with everything out here today. Thank you very much, Pete. I appreciate it. Okay, George Sinet joining us from uh, the CIAC. What a job he's done, Steve Boyle. Well, absolutely. And anytime you hear a retired principal, and here he is running a state agency uh, in the capacity that he is, it speaks again to lifelong commitment to kids and to, to see such value in what he's doing here speaks a lot about him. And I, I loved hearing him talk about it, the mother-son relationship between Jason Siegel, our athletic director, and his mom and, and the long-time commitment. So it's uh, wonderful stuff. Yeah, no doubt about it. In back of us, uh, we have our first games going on. In fact, uh, they play 16-minute games. We're looking at Bloomfield and uh, Rocky Hill behind us. Down to our left, we have uh, New Britain in competition uh, in their matchup as well. You know, when, and the first thing I noted when I first started watching is um, the New Britain team, just how much they're passing. Uh, there's a couple of athletes out there that look like if they wanted to, they could probably go down and score. But um, two of them are making very quick decisions to keep everybody involved and uh, make sure people are getting all the fun and touches that they deserve as well. So it's uh, a good time is being had by all, clearly. This is uh, Bloomfield uh, and... Uh, we have at this point uh, some, some oh, almost a near score. Got some excitement down on the left. Uh, so uh, at, I think we're going to get Superintendent Tom Moore to come on over and talk a little bit. Pete, I'm going to hand the mic back over uh, to our guest. Okay. okay. Very good, Steve. Mr. Moore, we're going to hand the mic over to you, and Pete's going to chat with you. Very good. How are you, Pete? Good. good How are you, Tom? You're good doing to well, thanks. Good to see you. Yeah. As superintendent, how proud are you to see Conard High School in collaboration with Hall to present something like this? This is what makes our school special, our kids special. Uh, just seeing how happy people are here. This is one of the great events of the year when you see things like this. No doubt about it. We had the privilege of broadcasting the uh, field hockey event last night, but as Steve Boyle and I talked about, this may be the most special event we do all absolutely. year. Absolutely, absolutely. This, there's so many things that our kids do that it's not us, it's not the adults, it's just the kids, making sure everybody has a place to shine, making sure that they're the star, that they're happy, and to see just the excitement, the partnership that so many kids have with each other, it's just a special day. As superintendent, sir, one of your main themes and messages, I'm sure, is inclusion. Absolutely. And this is the certainly the definition of it here today. Yeah, one of the things that we always like to say is we want to clear paths for students. Whatever gets in the way, and make sure they can follow that path that's right for them. And this is the kind of event, this is the kind, these are the kind of people that frankly we all want our kids to be like. We want our kids to just see each other as friends, as competitors, as athletes, and to have that moment that, um, you know, that, that makes their day special, their experience special. It's we're, fantastic. We're all one. We sure are. At the end we of the sure day. Are. And we this sure certainly are. exemplifies that. Oh, it's a great day. For sure. It's a great day. How proud are you, though, in particular, of your teachers and your athletic director as well? They work so tirelessly. Absolutely. And to come back and give of themselves to put on the days like this. Oh, to see people here, to see, you know, Jason Siegel, our AD, our AD here, is deeply committed to this. Tommy Varengia. You know, for years, I've known Tommy 20 years from when I taught here and coached here, and I've always seen Tommy with the kids, with Unified Sports, and just that's the kind of thing. And if you ask any of them, they're not doing anything other than this. Is, you got into the business to be around kids. Sure. And if you're a coach, you got into the business because you want to push kids to be better, to do better, and that's really what this is about in a fun way. Yeah, absolutely yeah. so. And you're talking about Jason Siegel. His mom has been directly connected with this Absolutely. program for 19 years. How special Absolutely. is that? Absolutely. No, that was one of the things we talked a lot about in his interview when we first hired him because I want somebody that understood 
the role that this plays in West Hartford, that all kids participate in plays and how important it is to us. And he's done a marvelous job. What sure has. Tough shoes to fill. Betty Remagino Knapp was so terrific. Absolutely. No, yeah. Yeah, he's he's been a great addition. Different. Betty is one of my favorite people in the world. Jason came in, put his own stamp on the job, but still we're doing great things for kids. And that department too, Carrie Roller oh, and uh, Mary yeah. Segaro as well. Fantastic. You've had some great hires over the we're, years. We're very lucky, <laughs> we're very lucky. West Hartford draws some good people. I'll say, and yeah. you're one of them and, and thank uh, you. Thanks thank for saying that, I appreciate that. Thanks, thanks for coming out and doing this. Oh, this is our pleasure and I appreciate Tom that. Moore, I'll thanks. back to Steve. Thanks, thanks for a few minutes, thank Tom. Thank you very much. Okay. Always fun to chat with Tom, Tom Moore, Superintendent of Schools, Pete. Uh, Terrific guy. When I first moved to West Hartford almost 20 years ago, he and I used to play at some 6 a.m. Friday morning uh, pickup basketball in the, in this gym. Did you? Uh, yeah, when I was, uh, he was uh, teaching history, and, and I had just started as a counseling intern here. So it was uh, a lot of fun, and I've known him ever since and have great respect for the work that he uh, he's doing as superintendent. He's done a marvelous job. There's, yeah. there's no doubt about it. And one of his jobs is to hire key people and key personnel, and he's certainly done that in the athletic department for sure. Well, it's, you know, and I heard you two talking about it. You know, the, my wife is an athletic director at a private school, and the amount of hours she puts in doing that is quite tremendous. And when I think about the fact that Jason Siegel is the athletic director at two large public high schools. Now, he's a politician, though, because I don't know if you noticed, he's wearing purple today. <laughs> and so it, it's always the ongoing joke. I, I think even Tom Moore, who's a Connor parent, has a shirt that might be half blue and half red. But yeah. Jason went straight purple because he has the uh, the whole Conard representatives today, so I uh, I think that's terrific. They didn't they didn't teach me that at Showed at UConn that if you put red and blue together you got oh. purple, but uh, I finally finally figured that out last night. It only took me a couple of years, but that's okay. Well, you know, people always say that you know I was a counselor and coach at Hall for years, but usually when people ask who are you rooting for, I just say West Hartford. There you uh, go. Because at the end of the day, all these kids grew up playing with each other, and. Uh, it, we shouldn't be delineating uh, wanting success based on where your, their parents decided to live. Uh, sure. And because you know you go to the school that's your that's your neighborhood school, and uh, and this is a wonderful town. And I think this represents uh, all of that as we unify our unified sports teams together. So, yeah. Well, well said, Steve, for sure. So the opening round matches taking place, and a goal right in front of us by Bloomfield. Well. Again, it shows the innocence of what's going on is that Bloomfield scored and and the, is this uh, Bristol in front of us, Bristol uh, Eastern? R Rocky Hill, I think, oh, yeah. perhaps, or it could be Bristol Eastern. Yeah, yeah. The Bristol, uh, Bristol Eastern Central, Bristol, I'm sorry. Bristol team, the goalie celebrated the, the goal that just went in. Right. And, and, and so both sides are rooting for each other and uh, we just got another quick goal from, from Bloomfield uh, by number eight out there. Sports at its uh, most pure form. Uh, ab absolutely, and uh, you know we were listening to George talk about the fact that, you know, sometimes at the at the end of the day, you the the inclusion model ends because kids kids then go home and they go to their their separate places, but I think one of the things that you know we're working on on, on the regional and, and even national level and some of the other work that I do, is trying to bring sports back to the schools because. Yeah. I wish that every kid in West Hartford could see what's going on in here right now. I think sure. that, you know, there's too many of our kids don't have a, a great appreciation and a great sense of what the challenges of some other student athletes might be and that their experience out here can be as powerful as someone else's. I think if they are able to see it as well, it would inspire them to see what these kids are achieving here. Well, there's, and you know, the fact that, that Tommy Varengia and Kerry Massaro are such great educators is because they're bringing the perspective back to their sort of able-bodied teams on a, on a regular basis about what they're experiencing with their unified sports teams. And when you do that, you bring a, a different sort of authenticity to your coaching, your, a different perspective when you're, when you're working with your high-level athletes. Oh, absolutely. Now, again... We may be a little biased in terms of our appreciation, extra appreciation for certain folks within the West Hartford coaching community. But in my privilege of having to do radio for 13 years in town, I did more games involving Conard softball and Hall girls basketball. Hall girls basketball because of Jeff Kaplowitz and yourself and the softball because of Tommy Varengia. Yeah. 
And the only championship I ever broadcast was the 2011 softball title, and they defeated West Hill down at West Haven High. And, uh, but regardless of championships, you guys are just all championship people, and, right. and, and, that's, uh, and that's what it takes really at the utmost, not only here this afternoon with these kids, but with all the kids and all the sports teams throughout town. Yeah, look, uh, good coaching is not, should not be measured by wins and losses. Wins and losses take care of themselves. So I was so thrilled for Tommy Varengia to have won a state championship. Uh, I've only experienced a couple in my life as an assistant or as a, I've never had one as a head coach. And at the end of the day, wins and losses take care of themselves because you do the right things and you build relationships. And if you yeah. look around this gym right now, these are champion coaches. They're building relationships with their kids. We get caught up in measuring records. We should measure coaches like the great Wade Gilbert, who I've gotten to know out of Fresno State University, just wrote, wrote the quality coaching uh, work for the U.S. Olympic Committee. He said we should be measuring our, our, our effectiveness as coaches, not in wins and losses, but by how many weddings and baptisms and bar mitzvahs we go to. Yeah. Because that says we've had impact with, with the kids that we're, we're serving. Sure. And Tommy, I, yeah, you just you watch him walk around town. He's getting hugs from everybody, parents, kids. And it's because you build relationships with folks, and that, that's really what it's all about. All those, those hugs and high fives and handshakes are worth more to him, I'm sure, than the ring, without a doubt. I, I've lost so many games that I don't remember anymore, and I've won so many games I don't remember anymore. But I do remember how the kids made me feel, and I hope they remember how I made them feel. And sometimes we goof, and sometimes I haven't been perfect, but if, if they know we care, then they let go of that stuff. Sure, that's the bottom line at Absolutely. the end of the day. So I'm looking at these paraprofessionals and teaching assistants and special educators, and uh, these people are doing uh, what my what my mom would call the angels' work. They're uh, <laughs> they're out there serving these kids in ways that many of us would not be able to do. Oh, absolutely so. Yeah. We saw the action uh, right in front of us, where Bristol Central is taking on Bloomfield. 2.50 to go in the opening game. And again, uh, we have 10 teams participating here today. Eight of them are able to play concurrently to take the time off. And uh, Mike, I don't know if we can get a zoom in on this particular uh, contraption here, but talk about adaptive uh, technology. Uh, yeah. the, the, Blo the Bloomfield uh, contingency has built a contraption on the head of their, uh, the wheelchair here that allows their special athlete to have an opportunity to go on goal. Isn't that and, something? Yeah, just, just wonderful uh, adaption. Um, she just came in. The goalie had made a nice save. It went back out to her teammate. And, but just, again, the creativity. Obviously, you could tell that's a makeshift device. And, uh, but it's a wonderful tool to allow her to participate as fully as the rest of the, uh, as the rest of the student athletes that are out there. And that, again, is the name of the game. Yeah. Absolutely, because you want her to go home feeling that she had an opportunity like the rest of the athletes to, uh, to participate. So uh, just great stuff uh, going on all, all over the gym. You, you can, you know, and sometimes you have trouble telling who are, the, who are the paras and the TAs that are helping? Because they're blending in so well in partnership with, with the students that they're serving. And there's another goal right in front of us. Yeah, and she got and excited. Look at, and look at the big smile on her face. Absolutely, wonderful, wonderful stuff. Uh, it, you know, credit to the, we, we've got a few cameras in the gym going here, so thanks to our camera crew was able to get, uh, get a zoom in there. Uh, we're going to be floating around from game to game as we go on. We have an auxiliary gym, I understand. We do, we do, we do, Steve. Uh, gym two in back of us, also uh, hosting a game as uh, as we're speaking right now. Great. Yeah, with this many uh, kids, you want to make sure they're they're all participating as much as possible throughout the afternoon. So the fact that we have four games going on at once. This is a great facility for, for this because we have three games going on in this gym and one going on in the back gym, I believe. Ex so we have four at one time. Exactly. Great. Exactly. Out of the 10 teams, that just gives two teams an opportunity to, to rest and practice up and get ready for their next encounter. Perfect. So they have a schedule built here today that's going to allow for 
continuous action. We said there are 16 minute games, Pete. 16 minute games, Steve. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think everybody gets the opportunity to play at least four times. Terrific. So yeah. everybody will build in some rest in their rotation. Uh, the teams that have enough student athletes to sub will be doing that. Um, and so, but everybody's going to get a chance to play because participation and what it's all about. So there's the buzzer to end our, our first round of games. The applause goes on around the gym. And I don't know who won, and I don't really care. And it, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but it is fitting that on both scoreboards at either side, it says six to six. Yeah, well, there you go. It's, uh, it's perfect. Uh, it's equity. Uh, it's unified. The score uh, showing up as tied. Uh, so there's high fives and hugs going on be amongst teammates and within teams on both sidelines. So George had s spoken about the fact that the hallmark of this event is sportsmanship, and that's usually best exhibited at the end of contest, and you can see it clearly right now. Uh, absolutely so. Steve, if you continue to talk for a few seconds, I'm going to try to... Uh find somebody else that uh, we can have uh, as an interview oh, subject. Be, that would be wonderful. I know there's a number of coaches that we'd love to talk to from around here. So yeah, so as the teams rotate, uh, you know, from uh, location to location, uh, they're, they're getting their new assignments and deciding where their next field should be. Uh, it's, again, it's just, uh, it feels like organized chaos in here, which, is a, which, which brings excitement. Sometimes things get too structured. It makes people feel uh, it ups the pressure and the ante. I'm feeling no pressure in this gym right now. I'm seeing excited kids, happy kids, uh, great support from wonderful staff, uh, and kids are just going to go and they're playing. Um, you know, one of the things we talk about in uh, in youth sports today is how hyper structured it is, and that kids don't know how to organize themselves. They sometimes don't know how to pick sides because when they show up, everything is done for them. And so trying to put kids into these free play situations is great. Now with these particular athletes, they need some guidance. But once they get out there, uh, they're doing uh, some invasive games, uh, we call it. Oh, so it looks like we might have just gotten a, a, another guest for, for, the, uh, for the broadcast. So I'm going to hand the mic over to, to Pete and, uh, and our guest. Thank you very much, Steve Boyle. Marie Siegel, thank yes, you so hi. much. Well, thanks, Pete. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, thanks. Boy, isn't this marvelous uh, out here today? Pretty exciting. I've been doing this a long time. It never gets old. 22 years. George Sinnett uh, was telling us of the uh, of the time. and yeah. uh, I'm uh, one of the original coaches, so uh, it's pretty exciting. We've seen a lot of changes, a lot of growth. It's amazing. Talk, amazing. talk about the growth and the evolution that you've seen after almost well, a quarter I mean, century. When we first started, I remember getting off the bus and we my team had t-shirts little you know red t-shirts and i said someday we're going to get off a bus and we're going to have real uniforms and there we are real uniforms um i don't know the exact number of schools that participate but it's at least 90 percent of the high schools now participate in some form of unified sports that's exactly what george sinette yeah. said oh, good. I'm you, glad. yeah <laughs> you, hit, you hit the number right yeah. on the head as a matter of fact yeah. and, uh, and uh, you know george is very special to us because he was one instrumental in starting the team in berlin he's our former principal right he was so saying. It, he gave us 110 percent support and the rest is history you know so it, it's great we wear you know the kids wear their jerseys to school Everyone knows, everyone in the building knows when Unified has a game. That's great. Yeah, it is. It's awesome. Go back to when you first started. How did you initially get involved, well, um, and what, what compelled I, I, you yep, to I do worked, it? I was a, worked in special ed, and the department chair was a special ed teacher, and we just got we, we learned about Unified Sports, so we said we need to do this. We had a couple of students coming up from the middle school, so we started it for the high school, and you know we started with five six seven kids at one point we were up to 25 kids oh. but with anything the population changes um you know so we're we're up to 12 now which is better than last year we had eight last year uh -huh. so and I'm, I'm told that we have more students coming up from the middle school so it's an ever-changing situation because you just never know what athletes you're going to have come out are there one or two moments that you could point oh, to over your one that is going to be with me for the rest of my life? I had a blind athlete. Oh. And she played basketball, and I called CIAC and I said, "Okay, help me. What do I? How do I do this?" And they said, "Marie, we've never had a blind athlete compete. You're on your own, pretty much." So we tried different techniques in practice, and she actually scored in practice one game. Oh, terrific! And then we play we play a lot at the halftime of varsity games. Oh, Berlin. okay. Okay. So we like to play when there's a lot of people in the gym. Sure. So 
she scored in the game. Oh, terrific. It was phenomenal. I had a reporter standing next to me, and he goes, gee, I guess every, everyone's excited. I go, no, you don't understand. She's blind. <laughs> she, and he was, wow. That, that, is, that moment is going to be with me forever. You know, I mean, where does that happen but at Unified Sports? That's terrific. You know, it's amazing. That's, it's the amazing. Name, that's the name of the game, right? It is amazing, yeah. As soon as you walked in the gym today, I said, oh, my God, that's Jason's mom. Oh. <laughs> hey, <laughs> yeah. talk, 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 talk about him. I mean, uh, how, how proud are you oh, of him? I'm extremely He's proud. And another thing, he was my very first partner. Oh, okay. He was, when we started, he was in high school. Um, I said, Jason, I need, I need you. He goes, okay, what do you need? I told him, jumped right in. He was one. And, you know, and, and back when Unified wasn't that, did people didn't know about Unified. You yeah. know, why are you playing with those kids? And he's like, sure. no, because I want them to compete and I want them to play. So years later when he was in college, he came back and did an internship with me. Oh, okay. So proud moment number two. You sure. Know, here, you know, he has come full circle. You know, he was the athlete partner. Now he was an educator. Today he's the athletic director. Well, <laughs> so pretty exciting. Oh, pretty ab exciting. Absolutely. And here he is hosting something like this. I ne never did I imagine that. But I'm very proud of him. And um, he helped get us started. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Continued best of luck. Thank you very much. Enjoy yourself here today. Thank you. That's, I appreciate it. That's thank great. You. Marie Siegel joining us from Berlin. Apple doesn't fall far from the tree, does it, Steve Boyle? Uh, I love it. I was so over here in the conversation behind you guys, and she's a clearly proud mom, but also more proud of her athletes. Uh, but it's a special moment, I'm sure, for her to be able to come into her son's new district and watch him uh, with poise and grace and class run an event like this. Uh, it's a, that's a special thing to be able to do that sort of mother-son. So uh, Absolutely. nice to see. Yeah, Jason asked a few of the coaches to reach out and give some information about some of the kids and she was the first one to to, to call in so, so he said well i i might know somebody yeah, yeah right. so that, uh, that's terrific so the uh we got bloom bloomfield and bristol eastern back out in front of us no this is that this is actually not bloomfield it's new britain in, in uh this next game but we've started our second round of games for the day another 16 minutes put up on the clock exactly and the kids are back at it having having some more fun and we have our first show of uh, West Hartford's uh, kids down to our right as uh, they're taking on Enfield in the second minute of their 16-minute contest here today. That's great. Good hosts that we are. We, we took the first game off, so the kids have been patiently waiting, uh, getting to participate. Uh, I notice uh, Kate Schaefer out there is one of our special helpers who is uh, also a soccer and lacrosse player. She's going to be playing lacrosse at UConn. She's already committed as a junior, so it's nice to see Kate out there amongst the special athletes participating alongside. Again, uh, the towns and schools participating today. Berlin, Bloomfield, Bristol Central, Bristol Eastern, Conard, Enfield, Middletown, New Britain, Newington, Portland, and Rocky Hill. So, as we talked about so many more schools nowadays, Steve, uh, participating in this, and good to have as many as 10 here today at this event. And they'll get ready and get uh, looking forward to the basketball, which will be hosted by Glastonbury uh, come the winter time. Well, you know, I'm sure that these are culminating events uh, for these kids. Um, they, they practice all season to uh, get into this environment, and, uh, you know, you can sense that when they arrive, they, knew, they know this is a big deal for them because their coaches have been talking about it, They've been practicing, but it's a big deal just because of the opportunity to participate, not because anyone's interested in winning state championships or going to nationals or anything like that. It's just they want the joy of play like every kid should have the opportunity to do so, and that's clearly going on here today. And the stories are just incredible to hear Marie Siegel talk about the uh, blind individual who scored. Uh, you alluded to so well the uh, contraption that was put on the wheelchair for the Bloomfield person to score. Those are the, the memories more so than wins and losses or anything that will come out of a great event like this. Yeah, so Pete, I'm not sure I shared with you that um, when I first started teaching and coaching, I actually ran a camp for children with cancer in Blair Towns, New Jersey. And, uh, oh, oh, no, and I actually asked my wife to marry me in front of all the kids. So uh, uh -huh. working with populations such as this is helped inspire me to a lifetime of coaching. I, I often share a, when I do some speaking about when I would show up at camp, there'd be artificial limbs line up along the fence of the pool, and that meant the kids were in swimming. And we would constantly have to adapt to whatever the ability of the particular children were. 
But one of my favorite stories was a girl named Yvonne who showed up at camp. And she grabbed me by the hand as we were running off the bus. And she was coming off the bus. She never met me before. And she grabs me by the hand and says, will you run with me? And we take off into a full sprint. And she was from uh, Harlem. Uh, we, we were partnered with Memorial Sloan Kettering. And I just took such a liking to this child. And whenever she'd see me, she'd want to play. She'd want to, she loved to run. Yeah. So in the winter, what we would do to keep in touch with the kids is we'd take them skiing. And so we'd meet, and we'd go to New Jersey, which really isn't skiing, but we found a hill that was they called the ski mountain. Yeah. And I take, and when the kids with artificial limbs would ski, they would take off their artificial limb, and they'd have ski poles with little skis on the end that they would call outriggers. Wow. And those outriggers would allow them to to work in a way that allowed them to get down the mountain safely. But I went up the ski mountain with Yvonne, and so we get to the top, and she's grabbing me by the hand, and she goes. Coach, look around. It's so beautiful, isn't it? Aww. And I looked at her, Pete, and I said, Yvonne, you're blind. How do you know it's beautiful? She goes, I can just tell. I can just tell. Oh, my goodness. And so Yvonne, the cancer had taken her, had taken her sight. But this reminds me of those moments for those kids that otherwise wouldn't have the opportunity to do things like that, is that Every child deserves the opportunity to play and participate. We can't leave anybody out. And it's really our responsibility and our job to provide opportunities such like this for people to participate. So, you know, I share that story because it, it sort of motivated me towards a life of serving and, and, and serving other kids. And so I, it, this is a real honor for me to be here today and just watch all the excitement in the gym and remember kids like Yvonne and the many others I got to know through those three, three summers I had with them. That's a marvelous story, Steve. Thanks for sharing that. Nine and a half minutes to go in the second round of action here. Connard and Hall playing down to our right, and they have a 3-1 advantage on the scoreboard about midway through. There's a young man from Bristol Eastern who does not care about boundaries. As long as he can kick the ball, he's going to take advantage of that opportunity. Absolutely. Looks like we have a Middletown coach who wants to come in and maybe uh, have a chat, Pete. I'm going to hand it over. Okay, Steve Boyle, thank you. Hi, Jenny. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Good. Say hi to the camera out hi. there. Jenny was so nice to put together a roster of her Middletown kids during her work and lunch hour today, so thank you for that. You're welcome. How many years for you involved with this very this special will be program? My fourth year, right? This is one of my volunteer coaches, former player Seth Wiafi. Oh, hi, Seth. Yep. How are you He's doing? This is my first year as a unified coach for this team. Oh, that's. I'm excited about it. Oh, you should be. You should be. How did you enjoy playing when you were an athlete? Oh, I enjoyed it, but I miss it. Oh, I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. Did you play soccer? Did you play basketball? What did you I play? I played all of it. Ah, oh, good for you. Good for you. Now you enjoy the opportunity to give back, I'm sure, yep. and to be the assistant coach. Yep. Oh, good for you. That's what this program's all about. Nice to see you mm -hmm. today. That's great. Yeah, Seth does a wonderful job. He helps us run practices, and he's just at every single one of our tournaments, and it's just really nice to have a former player coming and helping us. And how important is it to have uh, former athletes, too, to step up and, and to help you out? It's oh, a total right. team effort I for sure. I love, love it. I love it. I love it. That's, that's great. Do you have one or two special moments that stand out for you in your four-year involvement? Oh, wow. So many. Um, I mean, the leadership conference that's run for from Special Olympics for us is always a wonderful event. We have such a good time there. Um, the tournaments, especially even uh, Kagenchag runs just some nice one-on-one -on -one tournaments for oh, us. Oh, okay. But they do such a wonderful job at that school. Um, T typical. My sister teaches in the Durham oh, uh, public school see, system. So, so there you go. So I have to <laughs> shout out to her. Oh, and we're going against Portland next, and Portland has hosted us, and we've hosted Portland. Oh, and that's my dad was a former teacher at Portland, so oh. it's this little rival that we have going on. But Excellent. it's a good matchup good coming up. Um, four years ago, you got involved with this. What was the impetus to get you to, to come and, and join these uh, wonderful special athletes? This was just, I used to coach volleyball and track at our high school, and I just was always, I'm one of the school psychologists at the school, and I just love, I love this. This is like, I, I could do it all year, every, every day. I used to be a Special Olympics coach years and years and years ago, um, and this is 
This is just the best. This is what sports is all this about, is, right? This is it. Teamwork, having the best time. And you cannot smile. You just always have a good time here. Oh, that's great. Well, thank you so much for a few minutes. You're welcome. And and good luck uh, the rest, rest of the rest of today. Thank you. Big game, right, Seth? Mm -hmm. Big game. We got to go get the team ready. All right, Seth. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, have have fun today. You too. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Now, isn't that great? An, an alum coming back to, to help. Well, it was great on so many levels, uh, but just how proud he was and wanted. You, I, you know, I was overhearing that he wanted his coach to share the story of a former game, remember that one. And so, you know, for, for folks that wonder whether or not these experiences are part of, you know, the kids' memories, and of course it is. You know, that's, that's one reason that they keep coming back. And the fact that uh, yeah, I'm still looking up at him in the stands and he's all smiles about ha having been on television and uh, sure. sh sharing his story. So, uh, what wonderful relationship between a coach and athlete right there. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Connor and uh, Hall playing down to our right. And again, the West Hartford team actually split. Steve, I just found out into three different teams that they have because they only use uh, three athletes at one time. So there, there are 12 kids under the direction of Kerry Massaro and Tom Varengia. Uh, and they have a 4-3 advantage in their match with uh, five minutes to go in it. Yeah, it's it's fun to see um, the, these kids when they're when they're out there with the with their uh, able uh, with the partners that they're working with because in a three v three situation you can imagine for these coaches they're definitely not going to cut anybody from a program like this. We're trying to increase participation, but given the size of the space and the rules around how many can be out on the court. You have to be thinking through what's the fairest way to keep everybody participating. So it's one reason why, you know, if you ask why are we doing four games, it's so we can get an opportunity for everybody to participate at some point. So it's a good model for Tommy and, and uh, Coach uh, Kerry Massaro to, to use to try to get as many kids in for as long as possible. And then they can rest and, and wait for their particular turn. Absolutely. Just a quick aside about uh, Carey's soccer team, 10-3-3. Three and three. They had a wonderful regular season, and Tommy quite proud of the field hockey team that uh, continues to play well. They're headed to the state tournament as well. We had that broadcast last night, a 1-1 tie, and uh, soccer recently a 1-1 tie in the intra-West Hartford battle. Yes, both on the girls' and boys' side, I understood it uh, ended in a draw once again earlier this week, much like the boys did when you and I broadcasted earlier in the fall. Uh, Hall girls had gotten the better of Connor girls in that first matchup, but they came to a draw the other day. So, uh, you know, it's, it, it, I suppose it's like uh, Jason Siegel's purple. It's nice, to, it's nice when the <laughs> West Hartford kids tie because everybody's going home a winner. I, I'm sure that folks would disagree with that depending on what side you're on. But right. when, when, when you don't have any stake and you're, you're just wanting to see kids have a good, fun experience, uh, you know, in soccer, that one point you get, so you get a three points for a win, one point for a tie, and zero points, obviously, if you lose. That I think the one point that Hall got over Connor by tying put them into the state tournament, actually. So uh, that's great. So that was, the, you know, knowing that Coach Kerry Massaro and Scott Ferguson are good friends. I'm sure she didn't mind on that end, although I'm sure she would have liked the W. But sure. I was just talking to Delaney Connors, who's working the clock here, and. They're pretty sure they're going to get a home matchup. Uh, they think maybe Fairfield Ward would be their first round. There's a couple of other scenarios that could change that. But exciting that both uh, all four of the soccer teams, both field hockey teams, are going to make the state tournament. Yeah, as well as uh, the two volleyball teams. We had the privilege of broadcasting that last Friday as well, both 12 and 8. Wonderful. <laughs> uh, wonderful stuff and uh, great coaches, great athletes uh, for sure. And, of course, the hottest ticket in town in West Hartford every year is the Conard Hall swim meet oh. uh, where people are trying different ways to climb through the roof like they're in Mission Impossible or something like that just to see the action. Dave, who did the game, did the meet with me, said he had 11 different ticket requests that day. They only sell 250 tickets, and they were, they were gone. That was the hottest ticket, and I have never been in a louder building. Not, not Yankee Stadium, yeah. not XL for Stanley Cup or for UConn Georgetown or anything like that. It was incredibly loud. I've only done it once, and uh, people talk about it, you know, especially when the teams have historically been as evenly matched as they are. To be honest, the one year I went, Hall was so good at that point yeah. that they dominated, but it was still crazy. And, um, 
you know, and last year I understand there was a major upset. Uh, Connor had beaten Hall when it wasn't expected. And John Smacchetti's best victory, he says, in eight years. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. but I understand that Hall got, got the victory this year. Is that correct? That's correct, sir. 96-94, yeah. went down to the final race. Yeah. If Connor uh, had come in first and second, they would have won it. Uh, they did not. They got uh, second, I believe, and that was the margin of victory. That's fun stuff. I mean, again, I, I, you know, those great meets, having coached track and fields here at, at, in West Hartford at Hall, it was uh, nothing was more exciting than when the race went down to the four by 400 meter, which is always a just a wonderful race and one of the hardest events. Uh, and so we had a lot of times where we needed to do well in that four by 400, and we had a good one. So we usually we usually prevailed. Nice. Uh, so it's uh, it's but it, like, just like in swimming though, when you have a a, a a good athlete in every race and it's a competitive race there's nothing more fun than that oh exactly right and uh, went right down to the, to the final wire as as it were yeah and so like i would we were talking about before pete uh, it would be great for those swim athletes who might be disappointed uh if they didn't get on the the one side of the victory of course you're competing you wanted to do to do your best but you come out and see something like this and you you hear things like well, winning doesn't matter. It matters in the moment when you're competing. Sure. But it's, it doesn't matter in the scheme of life, in, in the scheme of day-to-day -day operations. It means in the spirit of competition it matters. Exactly. But people take it too seriously sometimes, put too much emphasis on it, and don't focus on the process and the relationship. Well, there was the buzzer for game two. Uh, so and, and, and Connor and Hall prevailed. They won seven to six. We saw the athlete uh, Lena involved. She was the one who led the oath for us and uh, did yeah. a great job with that. And I could see her as uh, the integral part of the action over there as they go through the nice handshake line at the end of each game as well. Yeah, it'd be nice to get Lena or Kate over here for a couple minutes and talk with them about their experience of, of working with these, these student athletes and how that's impacting their lives. Uh, I, I, th I think it's, uh, it speaks to the character of the kids that are participating alongside of our uh, our special need athletes that are here um, that you've got varsity athletes who probably just left practice and are now here for two three hours to support these kids as well which is a great statement on their part as well yeah and their parents for so, sure uh, for sure congrats to them and uh, appreciate their service as well so you see the kids are going into their team huddles breaking in and some of them seeing parents that are proud and happy to see their kids participating at such a level uh, and they'll will debrief um, catch their breath get some water maybe a snack and then get prepared for their, their third contest of the day exactly and those that have to go back to back uh, it can be a little oh, little I, testing that's for sure absolutely these kids are moving out there the whole time and some of them have played for 32 minutes already uh, you know when if they get their four games in that's obviously going to be over an hour's worth of cardiovascular exercise. I, I think soccer is a great uh, sport for these particular uh, athletes because it's an opportunity for them to keep moving. I mean, sure. They say of all the sports out there, soccer is the one where you actually run the most. Uh, there's studies that, well, they don't even include baseball because you don't always run that much unless <laughs> right. you, you know, the length of the bases uh, or an outfielder. But in soccer, midfielders are said to run anywhere between six and nine miles wow. in a, in a, in, during a contest. Uh, depending on the style of play and the, the pace of play. So uh, soccer is a great opportunity for these kids to get some mobility, some physical literacy skills going, fundamental movement skills. They're developing confidence. They're developing desire. Uh, so it's, it's wonderful to see them out here playing a sport like soccer. No doubt about it. Yeah. No doubt about it. Pete Lammer along with Steve Boyle. We're presenting Unified Soccer as presented by the War Chief Sports Council. And Channel 5, Tommy Varengia to our left. Shouting orders. Yeah, uh, shouting orders and uh, encouragement as well. Yeah. Congratulating his kids on a, a job well done. Yeah. I see one, one of my, my student athletes here, Maddox. Maddox, would you like to come on up and say a few words? Pete, you want to give Maddox a little assist? So this is Maddox, who I worked with at Bristow Middle School, but now he and I are at Hall High School together. Oh, how are you, Maddox? Good. How do you enjoy playing in games like these? I like it. Maddox and I sometimes have jokes about our haircuts. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> and as he reminds me, you can say that again, Maddox, into the microphone. You're bald. <laughs> How about me? You're bald again. <laughs> Maddox, what, uh, who's, who are your coaches here? Do you have uh, some coaches that are helping you? I don't know. Okay. So how often do you practice? Do you practice once a week? Uh, yeah. And what's your favorite part about playing sports? I'm not really sure. Do you like to move? Yeah. Do you like to jump? Do you like to run? Excellent. So you, you know the fundamental movement skills. You do all of them. Jumping, running, kicking. Don't kick me. I'm only kidding, Maddox. How about, um, do, you, do you play basketball as well? Yeah. That's going to be your next season, correct? Correct. G terrific. Are you looking forward to that? Mm-hmm. All right, Maddox. Thanks for joining us, and good luck in your games. Yeah. Thanks, Maddox. Oh, that was great. That's Maddox Chef, who... Uh, is a, a has a wonderful sense of humor as you as you can tell we, we have a little banter going on it says on my fact sheet that he also likes to dance oh well we, we probably could have asked him to do that we we saw when we asked if he liked to jump or to run he was willing to modify he was modeling that for us but uh right you know, it's right it's great stuff yeah. we'll get tommy over here at some point we'd love to chat with him uh, but we're about to start game three at this point and Bristol Central right in front of us again. And they draw Bloomfield. Bloomfield in the, in the bright orange. Uh, and we see a lot of the West Hartford youngsters down to our right. Actually, Pete, I'm noticing that each of the fields have uh, scoreboards in the corner and that the main scoreboard is for the center court at this point. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So West Hartford's playing on the same field as they were the last time. And they'll put their three new athletes out that didn't get um, of the 12 that didn't participate in the first go round. Mm -hmm. And so folks like Maddox, who we just talked to, has not had his chance out there yet, I don't believe. But he'll, he'll get it shortly. Sure. Yeah. Just have to point out, Steve, when I see that auxiliary scoreboard down there, yeah. just reminds me of the old... North Carolina basketball scoreboard that used to be. If you watch North Carolina basketball yes. home games, they had it down on the corner of the floor. Oh, yeah. Way, way back in the day. Yeah, almost flip charting in it uh, to try to keep the score. To me, it reminds me of growing up playing summer league basketball, and uh, it was the first time I'd seen those portable scoreboards, and I thought they were quite innovative. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so again, the enthusiasm is not diminished in the – you know, hour or so that we've been watching these athletes go through their opening ceremonies and now two games. We've got some uh, great breakaways going on and some kids that are really in tune with what they're trying to do out there and, uh, you know, keep keep their foot on the ball, keep the ball moving up in, in unison with their team, uh, supporting each other. It's really just great to see, Pete. Yeah, it really is, Dave. On a lot of uh, different levels, this is just absolutely terrific. Some powerful kicks, too. Absolutely. And then just the smiles after they, uh, whether it goes in or not, just all smiles when they make contact and have the sensation of you know, pushing that ball in the direction that they want to, using their foot, um, you know, showing good athleticism. Uh, yeah. Great, great sense of accomplishment for a lot of these youngsters out Absolutely. here today. Absolutely, and there we have a goal on the, for Bloomfield, and you might hear the excitement here at, at the center court. Uh, you know, we're, we're trying to get the cameras on all on all three fields, so we're, we have the bird's eye view of being able to see all three games, so uh, if, uh, you know, if you can tune in just to sort of see the camaraderie that's going on and the support from everybody, that would be great. Looks like we might have the Portland coach who wants to come on over, bring an athlete, Pete. Oh, and, sure. Uh, and and talk. Come on over here, Jace. Come on over here, buddy. So we'll get you We'll get you in the camera. What's your name? Uh, Austin. Hello, Austin. How are you? Good. Good. Okay. And coach? Uh, Mr. Carpenter, we're from Portland. We're, we're very excited to be here. And we heard this is your first year back involved. This is our first year. This is our first tournament, our first year, so it's all new to us, but this is a great environment. We're having a lot of fun. Austin's playing a little goalie earlier. Austin, move up here a little bit. So tell, tell me what's your favorite part about playing soccer. Well, it's all about the teamwork. It's not about yourself, basically. 
Um, but it's just the energy when you get in there, you really feel like the adrenaline rush. I, you know, I'm a mild tweeter, and I feel like I need to write that down. It, 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 it's, it's, it is. It's all about the team, right? At Austin, I, I love hearing that. But it's about the adrenaline. So what's your favorite moment of the day so far? Uh, well, just getting out on the field, you know, and having fun. That's what it's really all about. Absolutely. Having fun. How about that? Yeah. Right. Thank you, guys. Thank okay. you. Good luck. Thanks, guys. Yeah, Very bright it. young man. Oh, it's articulate, and, and I loved it. He just high-fived his coach walking away. He was so excited to chat with us. You know, and look, as I walk this world in youth sports, it's all about the fun, right? Right. You, if, you, if you ask kids why they play, it's because it's fun. And if you ask them why they left sports, it's because it's not fun anymore. Exactly. So we need to listen to the kids. The kids tell us that all of the time. So if we're putting kids into situations where it's not fun, we as adults need to pay attention to that. I, I'd like to use that clip at, uh, and, and share it all around the country because that was as articulate as one could put it. We asked him in an authentic moment, what do you like about sports? And he just said it's fun, right? Could you use that for 241 oh, sports? Oh, my gosh, I could use it doing coach <laughs> training, parent training. You know, we, sometimes I, I was just listening to John O'Sullivan from Changing the Game Project. He was up speaking in Longmeadow, and he says all the time, he, he says to parents, what do you think your kids want to hear from you from the sidelines? And the answer is nothing. They don't want to hear you. Right. right? They want to just hear you on the way home say, I love watching you play, and that's it. Right. And so I'm looking around at these parents, and no one's shouting instructions or directions. They're just literally enjoying watching their kids play. And then one of the athletes comes up and says, so excitedly, I love this because it's fun. It's simple messaging, but we need to get that out to everybody, Pete. That's, uh, you know, that's, that's important right there. Steve, and a lot of parents need to hear that, and they need to understand that as well. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I, and, and so developmentally, we don't know where he is in terms of, you know, you he appeared to me to be 14, 15 years old, maybe mm -hmm. developmentally. You don't know what he, what reading level he's at. But because of the developmental and physical age, I think he spoke for the gamut, right? He, he spoke for kindergartners all the way through high schoolers. I like to play sports because it's fun. Right. You know, he talked about the adrenaline the when he got out there, right? How, how oh great God, is I that? started to get goosebumps when he was talking. I about did too. Yeah. I did too. Because that's what is that's what sports is about. That when you look back on your experiences, you remember those moments and you remember the relationships with the people you did it with, whether it's your coaches or your teammates. You heard him too. He said, It's not about me, it's about my teammates. So right. Like, oh yeah. Gosh. We didn't script that, folks, but that was pretty much perfect. Exactly right. Exactly right. So thank you to the, uh, the Portland contingency for bringing Austin over and, and sharing those words with us. Oh, man, I would like to get one of those. <laughs> We're, uh, we just saw the water cart go by, so our, our man Pete Lamro is going to, going to snag me uh, uh, a thing of water. So, yeah, my name is Steve Boyle. I'm a counselor and a longtime coach uh, for years in town. I haven't been coaching for about uh, th three or four years. And I have had the privilege of working alongside Pete Lamoureux, who's an absolute professional uh, moderator and, uh, and with tons of experience in the broadcast world. And so it's a real, real treat. He'll come up, and I'll let him know I said a few kind words about him. But... Uh, I love his genuineness and his excitement when he when he does this work. So, thanks very much, Pete. I I took the opportunity while you were chasing down some water to tell everybody how much I enjoy working alongside a professional like you, uh, oh. doing something like this. So, well, thanks again for the opportunity. Well, you're the best, and uh, love having you. Whether it's soccer or lacrosse or this, you're you're the best. So, uh, thanks, Pete. It's it's really a it's an honor and a privilege, especially. Uh, as I watch these young athletes out here, and another goal by the Bloomfield contingency. Nice. With great support from you got uh, one of the Connard helpers out there refereeing and making sure the game is uh, staying fair. You'll see the coaches will want to make sure that if, if there is a dominant athlete uh, who is particularly high skilled, that that athlete is getting everybody else involved, and uh, and then the the referees might make sure the ball gets to the other side. So it's. It's just a nice way of making sure everybody's getting an opportunity to enjoy the fun. Sure. Just another level, another example of inclusiveness. 
Absolutely. Let's see if I can uh, round up one more interview. Terrific beat. So as Pete goes to uh, find one of our, our coaches for uh, to, to chat on, on, on the screen, uh, we're going to uh, just, you know, the cameras are rolling from court to court, uh, field to field, if you will, uh, seeing the action for, for amongst the six schools in this particular gym. And we have uh, one game going on in the auxiliary gym in the back. So eight teams getting a chance to participate at all times. And we started a little bit after 3 o'clock. It's 4.15 here on the East Coast. And um, we'll probably go for about another 45 minutes or so until we have our closing ceremonies. Uh, unlike a lot of, of sport opportunities, uh, people are not paying a ton of attention to what the final results are. It's all about getting the student athletes uh, participating as, as fully as possible at this time. Uh, you can hear lots of applause and excitement, but you're not hearing the sideline chants that you hear sometimes from parents to boot it and kick it and go get it and get them. And it's all about uh, just celebrating uh, the little successes that we're seeing on, a, on a almost um, every second basis. This is such a 180, such a departure from, it's so refreshing from, from what you were just talking about, Steve. You've seen, you've seen different coaches actually get run out of jobs by parents nowadays, yeah. and it's just, just awful to see that, and then you come and see this, and it's just, this is what sports should be all about. Well, one of the alarming trends that has happened uh, in sports that is, is just, I don't know, it makes me sad, I guess, I don't know how else to say it, is U.S. soccer has had to implement national days called silent sidelines where you go to a field and the parents aren't allowed to say anything wow it is surreal it's and you ask the players and they'll say it's their favorite day wow and how sad is that and the reason they had to implement it is because look in order for us to be able to run sports we have to have referees and depending on the level we're playing sometimes those are high school students but some of the stuff we hear from parents towards these high school students who are just trying to help, they make a couple bucks on a Saturday morning, sure. they're just being berated because they're seeing the game as, they, as best they can. And, and then you've got parents that are yelling at coaches and they're yelling at kids and they're yelling at their friends' children to do certain things and they're yeah. disappointed and they're emotional. So they implemented silent sidelines just to sort of remind parents you need to behave. There's none of that here. This is, the parents here are modeling exactly what we'd like to see. They're not taking it too seriously. They're just thrilled to watch their kids out there having fun. Sure. And when something good happens, you'll hear a, just a genuine round of applause. Right. And then they're back to their conversations and letting their kids play. It's just, uh, it's the way youth sports should be, quite frankly. What a statement, though, that silent sideline would be voted by the, the kids and the student athletes as their favorite. Uh, that should be a statement that's resounding throughout all of the, the sports community. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I, I do some work at the national level with a sports sociologist named Jay Coakley. And uh, the other thing we're working on is something that we're modeling after the MAD movement, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, and we're going to call it a mass movement, Mothers Against Sports Specialization. Oh. To try to get, uh, because the term soccer mom came along in the mid 80s, early 90s, and it's it started to actually breed this concept of soccer only, without intent, but it, it happened. Sure. And what happened is the soccer mom sort of became the crazy mom and started to support this idea of specialization. So as we speak and go and meet with folks around the country, we hear story after story about sad parents of kids who burn out turn to substance use, that, um, that tear ACLs multiple times, that have 10 or 11 concussions to the point where they can't follow the storyline of a simple sitcom. And they will always say to us, if I could start over, there's no way my kids would specialize. I'd have them participating in anything and everything and not doing that bam, bam, bam. So I think, sure. you know, soccer gets blamed as being a culprit for a lot of things, and there's different reasons for that. It's early exposure. But I wish we could bring some of those families and see soccer played in its purest form and, and with such joy at this point. Exactly uh, right. You know, there's no do-overs as a parent. You don't, you don't get to do it again. No. And so um, 
you make choices based on what you know so part of our job is to inform parents as the best we can around all this and Coach Kerry Massaro just walked by. Maybe we can snag her for a minute. Yeah, we had talked uh, about having her on. Hi, Coach. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Great, thank you. Kerry Massaro is the uh, girls' soccer coach, but she's also the head coach of the West Hartford Unified team. What a marvelous day this is. It is. It's great every year. Um, a lot of teams come out, and it's so fun to see the smiles on their faces. Oh, great, and, and what a nice thing it says about yourself. I mean, I know you're a modest person, but to coach your other team and to have your regular job and your family and everything, to give up the time that you do during a night uh, each week, uh, that's really something. Congratulations, and everybody owes you a debt of gratitude. Oh, thank you. It's actually, you know, it's obviously it's really fun. I'm fortunate that my whole varsity team came and helped today, so it was part of their practice today to come assist. And also, my daughter is here with me. She's on the team, so she's assisting, which is fun. That's terrific. I'm sure Steve's got a question. K Carrie, I had, uh, was talking about the fact that you and Tommy are longtime coaches, and I consider you guys old friends in the, in the business. And I, I'm sure that people will often you know, sort of give you this, uh, the praise you so deserve for being involved. But talk about what you get out of it as a coach and what you feel the kids give back to you in this experience. Absolutely. I mean, it's extra special for me because I already work with them in the school. I teach the PE strategies class, which is a, a combined class that teaches the regular ed students along with our special ed students. So then to have it one more step and be able to teach them or coach them after school, um, I mean, I get a ton out of it. I, I get as much, if not more, watching not only my team and my unified team come together, um, but also all the parents and everyone else that comes out and helps as well. You know, we're really lucky to have Josh Greenberg, one of the other physical education teachers at Conard this year with us. Um, and of course, Coach Brangie has been in this for a really long time. So it's also really nice to have that bond outside of school with, you know, two great people. Carrie, let, let me ask you as well, because one of the things I think it does is, you, you know, you have the high pressure all the time about being a varsity coach and people measure things on wins and losses, which gets crazy. I was telling Pete that, we should get do away with that and say, let's measure it on how many weddings or, or baptisms and things like that we get invited to. Because at the end of the day, it's about relationship. So the fact that you have your team here, can you talk about you know what it's like for your athletes and maybe how you use the perspective of working with this population when you go and then work with you know high-level varsity athletes, many of whom will play at the collegiate level? Yeah, absolutely. So um, again, not only what I get out of it, but with be you know they're all very busy so high school students are really busy so we have a few of my students that have come week after week and participated but a few of them that this is their first time being involved in this today and already you know i've had multiple kids say that they're looking forward to helping out for unified basketball because they didn't realize it was this special to see and to build a relationship with kids from other towns as well as our own kids here just wanted to ask you about your soccer team, 10-3-3, three and three. congratulations on another terrific regular season. How about the postseason? Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Everything's uh, absolutely confirmed tomorrow, but it looks like we're you know, fortunate enough to have a home game here probably next Tuesday in the afternoon. So uh, we haven't had a home game in a while, so we're very excited about that. Well, congratulations on everything that you do, and good luck in the tournament. And this is great today. Thanks for a few minutes. Thank you, guys, and thanks for doing this. Thanks, Kerry. Good to see you. Good luck next week. Thank you. Our pleasure. Kerry Massaro joining us for a few minutes. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, my daughter's had a chance to, to uh, play soccer growing up with Kerry's daughter. So, uh, you know, at the, at the youth level, probably when they were in fifth and sixth grade. So I got to know Kerry through that. And then, of course, coaching against her over the years. And uh, just great camaraderie amongst, uh, amongst coaches. I, I've said this time and again, but I'll, it bears repeating. There is more unity and more camaraderie in this town than any town that I've seen in the state. I mean, West Hartford is really very special and very unique that way, isn't it? Yeah, you know, look, I, I <laughs> it's funny. I, I run a Sunday morning basketball game that I've been running for years. And one of the things that I always joke is that I get to control the, what I call the jerk factor. <laughs> if someone shows up and they're taking it too seriously and calling fouls and arguing, they'll find themselves off the email list. I think that the town has done a really good job of making sure that they're 
recruiting and keeping good coaches because it says a lot about what the decisions are around that. And there's really, I mean, I, I you know, somebody like Jim Solomon, I know you know Joe Saul, who's yeah. one national tennis coach of the year. He mentored me in a way that was so subtle. I mean, he'll never admit he was mentoring me, but he was. I mean, he just had a way about putting his arm around me as a young coach and teaching me things and, I mean, that's what we do. And so, you know, I have now 25 years in coaching. And so when I see a young coach who I see with tremendous promise, like a Ben Von Meyerhauser, who's just getting started, and that, so, so good at, you know, connecting with kids. You know, I want those, I want those guys to be here for 25, 30 years. And I sure. think that's, that's the camaraderie that we see amongst coaches in town here. Ben is an excellent example, because here's Ben, who's taken a young program a couple of years now. And he's done such a masterful job of going out and recruiting the kids throughout uh, the football team and the rest of the school and, and yeah. really shaping up to be a great mentor himself and a great role model. Yeah, and, and so recruiting, and, you know, and when we talk about it internally in a school like, you know, public school, we're not recruiting from outside of the district because we can't. What you're talking about, of course, is recruiting from within your ranks. Yeah. You know, so I've had the opportunity um, as a multi-sport coach to recruit from one of my programs to another program. And you do that by building relationship. And, and you know, at the end of the day, we coach kids. We're not coaching a sport as much as we're coaching kids. That season, it might be basketball. It might be soccer. It might be track and field. It might be lacrosse. But at the end of the day, we're coaching kids, which means we're building relationships with kids. And I think that's what coaches like Jim Solomon get Kerry Massaro get, Ben Von Meyerhauser get, and that's really important message as well as we go through this. Ben shared that exact same message with me the first time I talked with him on the phone a couple of years ago. So he'd be he'd be proud to hear you say that, and uh, so uh, you're proud to hear him say that. Actually, is how I should say it. So maybe I should say that young Luke Skywalker has been listening. <laughs> yeah, that's, exactly. That's good. That's it's good. way to go, Coach Von. All right, so we got uh, for the first time this evening, Pete. We have. Uh, the Hall, the Hall Connor contingency right in front of us. So this is the, it's going to be fun for us. Uh, with some really fancy moves by the young athlete out there. Yeah, it's it's Newington playing uh, West Hartford right now. And one of the uh, students from Hall, Weller, is the the goalkeeper oh, right in front of us. 28, Weller, fantastic. Oh, that's oh a kick save. save. Oh, and a follow-up by number 52 at Newington who's very excited as he goes back and high fives his teammate who's equally excited for him. I see Anna Grace Chalkowski out there as one of the helpers, number 29. Anna Grace, who plays uh, soccer, basketball, and lacrosse here at Conard. And I know you had her dad on the broadcast last night with you, Pete, doing field hockey. Jamie's an old friend of mine who's actually in that Sunday morning game with me. Oh, he is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He did a really nice job for us last night, Steve. Um, so. So Jamie's high energy, so I'm sure that he, uh, I'm sure he was excited. Uh, and he has uh, three daughters, and, and there's one of them. Huh? That's Anna Grace. That's, that's the middle daughter. Uh, Anna Grace grew up. I had actually had a chance uh, to coach her for four years in uh, travel basketball in West Hartford. She and, she and my daughter, Siobhan, are both juniors in high school. And, again, it's one of the challenges of being in the youth program in this town is you grow up getting really close with the parents and the kids, and then they go to the other side of town because that's where they live, and now they become enemies. And we talk all the time about not having that rivalry be something silly, but have it be fun. Sure. Uh, since that's so important when people get carried away with it. Like right now, it's part of what I love about this right out here is that we're blending the student athletes from Hall and Conard, and they're having joy out there playing together. One of the players is uh, number 20, Jonathan. Jonathan, I noticed, Steve, is a lefty. He uh, had a nice lefty boot uh, a few seconds ago. Yeah, I know you can tell. It looks like he's played some backyard soccer before and looks like he knows the game and enjoys it. Exactly. You know, uh, as a counselor in town, I, you know, I've been, was at 15 years between Hall and Connor, and then I was in the middle school the last three years and got to know some of these student athletes like Maddox, who we had up on the, on the show earlier. Mm. Um, you know, and it really is... Uh, the, the special education department in West Hartford, I, I'm telling you, I mean, I know folks have moved into town because of how, how good we are with that particular population, how inclusive we are in our delivery systems, um, and just the staff that works with these kids. 
I, I'm just so impressed. In fact, Ben Von Meyerhauser is one of those staff, like Tommy Varengia, yeah. works with special needs kids on a, on a daily basis, so patient. And I think it's part of where they learn their empathy is uh, through that experience. Sure. It's all perspective in life, isn't it? Absolutely, Pete. There's Roy for uh, the whole Connor team. Yeah, Coach Marsaro in, in, in these settings is, unlike her varsity games, is allowed to go out on the field and give some quick tips and instruction, little check-ins to see how kids are going. Sure. Um, well, here's a Newington athlete who could use the Bloomfield contraption that was built for that young lady. Absolutely, you can, Steve. You can see the, uh, uh, the friend behind who's pushing the wheelchair is doing a good job of keeping the ball where it belongs. Uh, they're helping to make sure that they can keep the ball in front of the wheelchair and he gets an opportunity to get the ball in. The goalkeeper, though, is determined to not let that goal happen. He's getting some instructions. He's been told to clear the area so we can get that, get that goal in. Now here he comes with finish. We're almost there. The ball is getting a little bit jammed underneath the feet with a little more help from his teammate. The excitement is building as he gets closer to the goal, Pete. Good, I think we're going to see some play, se Steve. serious excitement. It's almost there, and we have a goal. Hey, oh, right. Look at the smile on that young man who's so excited. He'll remember that for a long time. Absolutely. Look at him. He just, you know, again, the opportunity for him to high-five coming off, knowing that he put the ball in the net, uh, that, that's what this is all about right there, Pete. No doubt, Steve. And behind us, you can hear Tom Varengi. I mean, that's, that's an unmistakable voice that you can hear from yeah. the uh, sidelines of Absolutely. basketball and field hockey and softball over the years. Johnny, you can hear Coach Varengi in the past with great saves. But number 22 is determined to get that in. Another another lefty. Yeah. Uh, with a nice, nice move. Nice in front. goal. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it is fun to hear Coach Berengia barking orders from the from the <laughs> sideline and encouraging his team and treating these athletes like he would any any of the softball or basketball players that he's coached over the years and field hockey, of course. Oh. They score. Huh? <laughs> Tremendous. Roy getting the goal. <laughs> so Gerard, he's very excited. He's, he's like talking to his coaches. Oh, wow. that's the longest goal of the day from over half court. There's our friend, the lefty, number 22 for uh, Newington. Looking at, looking like that's just what I do. Messe out there. Uh, yeah. Ma ma making a, a left footed toe poke from over what we would call half court or half field in here, Pete. But he's acting like that's just what I do. That was long distance, Steve, I'll tell you. Yeah. Oh. Paul Connor almost got their second goal of this particular contest. Uh, their Coach Renji is encouraging the pass at this point. Nice pass over to Christina. And there's Christina with a goal. And you can see the coaches helping the young man celebrate the assist as much as the goal that he just had. So it's an important message is that he understands that part of being on a team is getting everybody involved, and Christina got a big smile on her face when she got that opportunity. I have the Newington roster. That's what I've been looking for here, okay. Stephen. Unfortunately, uh, there was no 22 that was. Uh, well, you can tell even right there that, uh, you know, he knows that he's pretty good and that he, he had an opportunity to score there, and I, and I saw him take his foot off the pedal, so to speak, that he, he knew he could have gone in, and he just sort of passed it to the goalie. So, um, and right now he's letting his teammate have an opportunity to have the ball, and, and he's setting it up for her. All right. So now we got some subs coming on for the Newington contingency who brought a, a small army with them today. And they, uh, they did. As opposed to what Hall and Connor's doing is allowing kids to stay out of the court for the whole 16 minutes, Newington's choosing to sub throughout the game and doing sort of mini lineups, keeping the fresh legs, if you will, Pete. Sure, Steve. Yeah. And it's working so far. They're playing very, very well. Yeah. That was Maria who had taken the last shot for the Newington team. You know, I like this. I see the um, number 28 from Hall Connard who just knew he had an assignment. And so, you know, these are called invasion games when you have offense and defense. So Mr. Weber out is um, uh, Weller. Mr. Weller out there just uh, realized he had an assignment uh, and went and found his mark. Uh, it looks like, you know, and. In soccer, sometimes you sort of play an area, but there it looked like he knew he was assigned to a particular player, so he, he gets the concept of defense as well as offense out there. 
Another lesson learned. Well, this young man is dominating, so he knew he could have scored there and found his teammate, who just took a wonderful shot, but a great save. Excitement from his teammate on the sideline. Roy, Roy had the answer in goal. Absolutely. Roy is one of the uh, Connard kids. Again, we have five Connard kids, five Hall kids as part of the 12-person uh, roster. Yeah, Roy with another save, actually on a pass back from his team. Almost had an own goal there, but Roy was able to make the... Uh, the wonderful save with his left arm as he holds his arm after the contact there. <laughs> yeah. Looks like well he's going to be all right. He's going to be able to hang in there, though, for the rest of this contest. And yet another save. Newington's uh, getting their subs in again. Um, looks like they're giving them a little two-minute two minute shifts. We got some young ladies that have come out on the, on the field now uh, to support the athletes. 640 to play in this. I believe this is the fourth round of games, Steve, that we've, we've That had. is correct. And a nice shot and a score. That was Brett Hammonds. Yeah, Brett had an early goal. You could tell Brett's been really excited from the second he came in the gym. He really enjoying this opportunity to get out here and show his stuff. Brett's um, the uh, type of kid, Steve, that keeps the team loose. Absolutely. He was cheering like on his teammates. And and, all over uh, the place. Love it. Yeah, his coaches had given us some notes about each of the players here, and one of the they pointed out, and we're seeing it, that he's he's definitely having fun with his teammates and uh, really, really enjoying uh, the experience. And much like Austin from Portland shared with us earlier, looks like he's having a lot of fun out there, Pete. And that's the name of the game, Steve, as we've said. The athletes have been at it for almost an hour and a half now, Pete. And you, you know you can, you know you feel the energy waning a little bit, but mm -hmm. uh, still in those, you know we talk about sports being moments, right? And uh, so there's been a series of moments that we might not, not have even captured today so far. But uh, you know that for each of these kids that are out there, they've had a chance to have those moments, and it's uh, clearly been been uh, special for them to to be able to. You know, ha have those little incidents where a teammate might have passed them or given them a high five, a coach has given encouragement, or as we just saw, the young man in the wheelchair who scored and just couldn't control his smile when the applause went off. Those are special moments. For sure. All Connor team battling Newington right in front of us. You know, the... The, the, uh, the folks here are keeping score. We got scoreboards on the end to identify the middle score, middle court, little flip chart scoreboards, but I haven't seen one athlete pay attention to the scoreboard. I haven't really even noticed it myself. It's, it's kind of a great message, isn't oh, it? It's wonderful. It's just, you know, look, they're, they're out there. They just they want to have the experience to sort of be in the limelight and play with their friends and have their parents cheer them on like uh, they see on television with other athletes. We're having a similar moment to as we did before. And it's nice to see. Uh, so the young man from Newington was a, got a little impatient there. He, was, <laughs> yeah. he, he really wanted uh, his, his teammate to score. And uh, Mr. Roy is doing a good job in goal, though. Oh, no, he is. Yeah. He really is. He's had at least four saves unofficially oh, yeah. so far. I saw Matty Hooper earlier today, and I'm sure that Matty, who's worked with, with this population over the years, who's now the... Goal, who was a longtime soccer goalie at, uh, for Hall and now is a lacrosse goalie at UConn, would be proud of that young man. Uh, Newington with, an, with another, uh, another strong goal right there. Brett Hammond, very authoritative with the right boot that time. Yeah, as you see, he's loved by his teammates. He comes off the court, and literally every single person on the team gave him a high five. Why don't we get uh, Brett over here for, to chat? Sure. Brett. So we're going to see if we can get that get that young man over here, who uh, see see if we can have him talk about his excitement and uh, yeah. Pete Pete's going to uh, we're going to get him over here in a little bit. Uh, while we were looking to get him, we one of the Newington shots nearly knocked our camera over. So uh, the way we're set up here, we were able to do it. We're going to be able to get him over here, Pete. We are, Steve. Uh, they're just going to after the uh, two minutes and 45 seconds have elapsed, uh, they'd be happy to join us. Terrific. I guess you know, Pete's 
Pete understands that if he's doing interviews, he's gonna he's he's gonna miss game time. So uh, right. he's gonna maximize his opportunity here and get on his next shift, and then come on over and do his do his media work. Exactly right. He's learned that at a young age. Again, what's what's fun out here is, you know, you're not seeing over elation. You're not seeing horrible sorrow you know people are the kids are taking it all in stride they celebrate the moment if a goal goes in but we saw before that the student athletes from other teams are celebrating even when the other team scores you know uh -huh. and so but i'm not seeing you know that newington has clearly has some very very strong players and scores getting a little bit high but i don't see the conard hall kids being like oh i'm going to give up or this is no fun. They're having as much fun as they were in the beginning. Sure. Whether it's 8-4 to four Newington or 8-4 to four Connor, they're going to enjoy it just the same. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can see num number four from uh, Newington there is having a blast in terms of his energy. Uh, Peter, Peter, Peter Lee, and uh, he's had a couple of nice goals as well. And you can tell he looks like he could be on the Newington cross-country team the way he's running out there. And I just... Steve, you're a veteran soccer person yourself. A couple of these kids from Newington definitely have some soccer background here. Oh, absolutely. You can tell uh, that we, we don't have his name. Number 22 has played a fair amount of soccer. And, um, you know, again, it speaks to the, the value of physical education for these kids and how well they're doing PE, uh, how often it's offered for them. Coach Frank Robinson does the PE strategies course that we have, and, and it allows for a very similar model to this with – our uh, special needs population to work alongside our able body athletes with a veteran PE teacher like Frank at the helm. And they will have PE almost every day. And so if you're involving games like this, they're gonna become proficient at it and start to enjoy it in a way that they have confidence in it. That's physical literacy. Sure. Yeah. It was good to see, even with Brett out of the game for Newington, he's still cheering his teammates on as if he were on the field himself. And Absolutely. We'll have to ask him about that when we get a chance to do the interview. You know, we were talk I talked about cross country there for a second, and Coach Jeff Billing, as you know, has 120 or plus boys out for cross country. And the Connor, I, I took a video at the start of the Connor Hall race, and just to get the start from where I was standing to get every athlete through took two and a half minutes. Wow. It's unbelievable. Wow. And I noticed amongst that group, there was a number of special needs students. So, you know, when we, we talk about sort of a spectrum of, of abilities, and so cross country is one of those sports that many of these kids might be able to participate in, assuming that their, their ability would allow them to, to do it uh, on a physical standpoint and a safety standpoint. So it's a good opportunity for them, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, so now we're seeing the handshakes that happen after every game. Um, again, lots of camaraderie amongst these schools internally and externally. We're going to get the Newington coach and um, and our friend over over here, uh, Brett Hammond, who yeah. we, we, were, we were noting during the game. Yes, sir. Come on over here, guys. Sure. We'll get, we got our camera in the center here, so if we put you guys there. So uh, Brett Hammond, is yes, that your sir. name? We were watching you out there having so much fun. So why don't you tell us uh, a little bit about why you like this so much? Uh, I mostly like this because my mom thought it would be a good, uh, a good thing for me and just to make new friends and uh, make new friends but keep the old and especially have a good solid relationship with my coach, Green coach Greenberg here. Great, co great solid relationship, Coach Greenberg. Talk about your relationship with Brett and with some of the other student athletes. Uh, Brett's got a fantastic sense of humor. Um, anyone that's around him knows that he loves a good joke. He also loves a bad joke, but he also but he <laughs> he hasn't met a joke yet he didn't like telling, which is fantastic. I love his sense of humor, and I, he's always smiling about things. So, coach, I noticed that um, you were you putting the kids out there in waves, and one of the things we noticed about Brett was he was ex as excited on the sidelines as he was when he was in the game. And we wanted to get an interview from you during the game, and you were wise enough to know, no, I'm, I'm still playing. My team's still playing, and you stayed with it. So talk about his attitude on the sidelines. Well, I think his attitude is contagious out there. He wants to have fun. It's, it's competitive, but at the same time, his number one goal is he just wants to go out there and have fun. And it, whether he's on the sideline, whether he's in the game, he want, he, that's all he wants to do is enjoy the, the 
and live in the moment and be able to, to score, cheer his team on, whatever it takes to help the team. He's, he'd be what they call in professional sports a good locker room guy. Oh, absolutely. So, hey, Brett, look like you've played soccer before this competition. Have you played for a few years? Yes, I have. I have played for a few years, and most of my days as a transfer student in Vermont, and I have joined this team because, again, my mom thought this would be a good program. She, wouldn't, she wasn't wrong, I'll tell you that. Coach, so, I'm, I'm sorry, Steve. Coach, it looked like you had three or four kids out there that really, really knew the game well. Yeah, we've, uh, I mean, we've been working on it for a little while, and – uh, Skill-wise, we did a lot of skill work. We really didn't play any games against each other that much. All of what we did was skill work, and it would all translate onto the court, and it did. Paid off for sure. Steve? Brett, Coach talked about the word fun, and everybody we've had that's been a student athlete today has used that word. And I know you said your mom had asked you to do it, but clearly you're having a lot of fun out there. What's fun for you out there? For me, personally, it's just uh, motivating my team to do their best. And uh, in the words of Gino Oriyama, make championships happen. Because, again, like Gino says, championships are not made. Championships are earned. Well, I, I like that. And I also like the, the way that you talk about your teammates all the time. Because I think building relationships with coaches and teammates, obviously that's a lot of fun for you as well. I think Coach knows you get, you get a lot of athletes you get to work with over the years, and, and you're clearly one that, that he's definitely going to remember. I can see that already. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks, guys. Appreciate guys, it. Thanks, okay. thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, Brett. Good luck the rest of the day, guys. Seth Greenberg, the head coach, Brett Hammond. What an amazingly articulate young man. And he, yeah. he's another one who gets it. Absolutely. and uh, Wish more parents would get it, right? No, exactly. <laughs> and look, so sometimes, you know, parents will ask, you know, should I sign my kids up for sports? And the, the answer is yes. But if they say the next year they weren't having fun, then the answer is no. So he was thanking his mom for this experience. Clearly she wasn't wrong, he said. And he talked about relationships with his coach, with his teammates. And there's that word fun again, Pete, right? Right. Dominates so the... the it, and as it should for everybody involved in sports, it should be fun. You tell me those guys in the World Series weren't having fun last night? Absolutely. Of course they were. Especially, yeah. especially on the Houston side. Yeah. You know, but. I mean, I, the, the, all of us, when we're involved in, in any level of athletic competition, if fun isn't at the core of it, then we're doing something wrong. So, you know, we could, we could probably do a poll and uh, today and, and count how many times we bring up student athletes here and, and see how many times the word fun comes up. I'd, I, I think we'd be hard pressed not to have it a lot. Um, I've gotten to know Dr. Amanda Visick out of uh, George Washington University and she did a study uh, funded by the National Institute of Health on the concept of fun. And so she did something called the fun maps. And um, when they when asked kids out of 93 determinants where winning stood, it hmm. was number 53. Wow. So Not even in the top half. Not even in the top half. Relationships is number one, right? Opportunity yeah. to be with your friends, okay? And so we need to pay attention to things like that as we go through this, go through this world because if we don't, it's one of the reasons we lose kids from youth sports. Sure. If it's not fun, we won't stay with it. What was the first thing that Brett Hammond just mentioned? the relationship with his coach absolutely absolutely and that so, was so refreshing and yeah. so great to hear yeah so uh i wish i was taking notes all day i might have to re-watch the broadcast because uh <laughs> i i am pretty active on twitter steve boyle 241 or at 241 sports and i retweet a lot of things that have to do with this concept of fun this concept of uh inclusion this concept of participation so john kessel from usa volleyball is also in charge of the uh, Paralympics uh, for, for volleyball as well and does a lot in the whole space. And so one of the things he does with his able-bodied Olympians is he has them play volleyball from their butts. Oh. And so it's fascinating what they learn. So they'll lower the, the nets so that the kids that normally would, but you give that experience to, to take the handicap and give it to an able-bodied person to see what it would be like to participate. And it gives you a whole new perspective in terms of how challenging it is. Uh, but you know, if What a great idea, what a great concept. Uh, if people wanna follow, if people wanna follow John Kessel, um, his work, he has a wonderful blog and very active on, on Twitter. And the other one is John O'Sullivan, Changing the Game Project. Uh, many of them are involved in something I'm involved in called the Quality Coaching Collective. And we, 
we talk internationally about this particular concept of inclusion and getting kids to participate in youth sports. That's Steve. I'm Pete, presented by the War Chief Sports Council today, our celebration of unified soccer here at Conard High School. Just want you to mention the great work that you do for 241 Sports. If you could elaborate on that a little bit more, Steve. Yeah, thanks, Pete. Um, so f folks might see the magnets around town, at least here in West Hartford. And the concept for us is to not have kids specializing in, in one sport at too young an age. I mean, my preference would be never specializing until the collegiate level, but I always love the multi-sport athlete. Perhaps happens more at the Division three level. Sure. Um, but really what we're doing um, is trying to help folks understand what we're seeing here today is that sports should be fun and that we, we overstructure kids' lives in a way that um, the joy of it has been taken away in some capacity. Uh, and so um, we are champions of a concept known as physical literacy, which has been around the globe for decades, but really is starting to get to the forefront here in the United States. So myself and a group out of Canada and, and some other coaches around the U.S. have a proposal in front of the U.S. Olympic Committee right now around bringing physical literacy onto the grassroots level as we look at long-term athletic development. We call it the American Development Model in the United States. Globally, it's the Long-Term Athletic Development Model. And it's really looking at this concept of stages and ages. What's appropriate for kids and to what age? How are we, why are we losing kids from youth sports? Why aren't we asking them what they like? What, what's going to keep them involved? And we've talked about the word fun all day. So we, we want to make sure that the programs we're offering through 241 Sports and at the National Association of Physical Literacy have fun at the core. Talk about the camps that uh, you have during the summertime. I know uh, perhaps would like to send a shout out to a couple people to help you. Frank Robinson in particular is the first one that comes uh, to mind who, who you told me has just been uh, awesome yeah. for you guys. There's so many great people. Uh, you know, because of my relationship uh, in the coaching core in town being at Hall, we do have a lot of Hall coaches, Scott Ferguson, Brian Moretti, Jeff Billing, Ben Von Meyerhauser, former Hall coach Nicola Giovanni, um, Brittany Huggins. Um, and then we have Ryan Redmanovich, who's at KO. He's a two-time Canadian Olympian. Um, and we run our, our flagship camp at Kingswood Oxford. We have over 500 kids come through. And we really pride ourselves in the fact that up to 20% of the kids who come are kids who otherwise couldn't afford to do so. We also run a spring break camp. I don't know if you know that, Pete. No, that, I that don't Frank and, um, and Coach Robinson and Brittany have been helping with me. So in the mornings of spring break, we do a mini version of 241. And then um, Coach Brian Moretti's old teammate is the athletic director at Denver South High School in Colorado. So this will be our third summer in Denver, Colorado as well. We're talking to a school in Minneapolis and a number of other schools around the state. So we're growing our programming, and it's been a lot of fun. Terrific. Yeah. Continued success with that. It's an amazing program. Thank you. And, and Thank uh, you. done such great work with it. And so at this point, I see the uh, the Hall, the Hall Connor con contingency is uh, over here, Pete. Um, our, our friend Maddox, who we who we got to meet uh, earlier, um, is uh, is out on the out on the court for the first time. And they're taking on Rocky Hill, Steve, yeah. in uh, what is their final match of uh, the afternoon's proceedings. We saw a nice aggressive goal right there with Maddox set up our num number 40. Do we have his name on our roster there? We do. That's Andrew, who's a big sports fan who also likes to fish. Oh, fantastic. So, and uh, uh, very athletic, according to uh, head coach Kerry Massaro. Yeah, you could tell. He was very aggressive after the ball, had a good nose for all oh, Maddox with some fancy moves. We heard Maddox is a dancer. We're, we're, yeah. we're seeing that right now. Good point. Yeah. First down, we're seeing that. Yeah. Just, I'm sorry, Steve. I just wanted to mention some of the other kids yeah, uh, on this team. They have uh, Kem Well, uh, who's been a uh, star out there today for the uh, Conard Hall team. Big sports fan, uh, likes baseball. We mentioned uh, Andrew. Sarah also is participating today. She's wearing number six. Big Yankees fan. She enjoyed a good season for her team. Absolutely. Not so good in game seven against Houston, but you can't win them all. They lost to the eventual world champion, exactly. so, so no dishonor there. Yeah. We've talked about Jonathan, uh, who's been uh, terrific, loves to play games on his phone. Uh, we saw him uh, out in front of us. Roy, who did such an excellent job. Excellent tending goaltender, yes. Excellent goaltender, uh, considered by... Uh, uh, Kerry Massaro, among the friendliest and the happiest of all the kids on the team. Weller, who uh, his favorite pastime, go out to lunch with his mom. 
How about go that? out to lunch with his mom. How about that? Yeah. Right. While you were talking, our friend Maddox just just put in a nice goal, and uh, he just got subbed out and got some celebratory high fives from his coaches on the sidelines. A well deserved rest with his work out there. Sure. Um, Sakai is one of the uh, the players today. Was that Sakai who just scored that goal? Look how excited he is. Number 18 goes down and does a little celebratory chant in front of his his goalie teammate. That was a nice nice shot that yeah. he uh, that he had there. Great speed uh, displayed by Andrew right there. Absolutely. So the, uh, the Rocky Hill. Uh, uh, team has come up against a juggernaut of athletes at this uh, this particular shift that the Hall Connor group has put in. Very excited group. They really are. And they're really moving the ball around, that's for sure. Pete, I've been sharing some, some personal stories. This young man is Kemwell. Kemwell, yeah. Yeah, so he had a he had a nice goal. So what uh, I happen to have 77 first cousins, believe oh, it or not. Oh, my. And the cousin who was closest to me in age, Sean McDonald, his, his brother was the all-time leading scorer ever at St. Rose College for men's basketball. Oh. But Sean was a tremendous Special Olympian. And so he was born with Down syndrome. Until we were ages six or seven, I knew no difference between he and I. And okay. so we are now um, 50 and 51-year-old, respectively. Sean has survived leukemia oh, and wow. is still to this day loves to play basketball with me when we get a chance. And so we talked about it earlier today is that part of what we're hoping through programs like Unified Sports, which is a subset of Special Olympics, is that these kids will be active for life. And I know that my cousin Sean still talks about his experience in Special Olympics to this day like it happened yesterday. Wow. Yeah. And... Um, I mean, because whenever he sees us, he, he goes, he flashes back in time. So he still does things. Remember the show Good Times? Oh, sure. He always does dynamite. And he, <laughs> just and he like just, JJ. Exactly. So he does these sort of historical references to when he remembered his relationship with us when we were young. Yeah. But he, he links his Special Olympic moments to knowing that I was playing basketball with him growing up. So he lives in upstate New York. So when he sees me, he always brings up those experiences of our childhood, and even as a 51-year-old. That's great. Yeah, so if you don't think, you know, that these kids are remembering these experiences, I mean, I have firsthand account to know that they do. The, uh, the young man, Brett Hammond from, from Newington, exceptionally articulate. He's quoting Gino Oriyama. What a great role model to have, number one. But uh, you can tell that the way he was quoting him, that he'll remember that uh, uh. 15, 20, 30 years down the road. Now, I don't know Gino personally, but I have gotten to know some of his student athletes over the years. And, I, you know, from what I know through his players, Gino would appreciate knowing that a young man like that is quoting him. And that, you know, because I think Gino gets, like, you know, you're in the spotlight, and with that comes responsibility, that our public figures, our leaders, need to recognize that everybody's watching. Yeah. We have a cultural impact based on our words and what we say and how we handle ourselves. Where a young man like that has respect if Gino Oriema was a jerk and was saying bad things this young man's still probably going to emulate him and so we want to be really conscious of that as we go through this world sure sure oh great kick right there from the Rocky Hill athlete uh, that's the first time we've seen him get involved so uh, I'm starting to see this group uh, sort of wake up a little bit if you will right you know maybe they're uh, didn't didn't like the Hall Connor domination and they're starting to take over some so they have three and a half minutes to yeah. stamp their imprints on the rest of this game. Absolutely. Oh, there's the Hall Connor goalie we talked about in this particular one who's the, the, the good athlete, Andrew, who uh, said, you know what? Uh, you're going to have to give shoot a little better than that. If you're going to get you're going to get it past me. <laughs> there's Maddox doing his dance steps down there. Uh, and there's Camwell. These guys are doing a great job. You know, funny, um, I, I don't know if you, if you get my newsletters, Pete, but I did a, a newsletter this past week talking about the fact that the Baltimore Ravens star running back is now getting notoriety for his Irish dance skills. Oh. And he, um, you know, he's African-American, but his high school... Uh, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I was going to say he had plenty of chance to celebrate against my Miami Dolphins uh, a week <laughs> ago today <laughs> in a 40 to nothing Baltimore win. Yeah, so well, I'm hit, sorry, Steve. No, he was introduced to it because his high school coach's daughter was an Irish dancer, oh. and he learned it. And there's a great CBS special uh, 
showing how he uses his Irish dance skills for his footwork in terms of how he jukes folks on the football field. Wow. And uh, it was it was a fascinating thing. And my two sisters run one of the largest Irish dance schools in in uh, Northern Virginia, Washington, D.C. area. So they were excited that I was comparing NFL running backs to Irish dancers. So I'll have to share that with you. <laughs> in particular relevance to them. I mean, they're not far, certainly. Uh, exactly. From, from the Baltimore area. Two minutes to go. They haven't uh, flashed a score on the scoreboard, but uh, West Hartford playing very well. There's our friend Maddox again. There he is. Yeah, I'm seeing the score in the corner. Hall Connor 7-3, but again, it seems that maybe it's, it's only to sort of keep the the parents engage in some capacity just to sort of know where they're at in terms of totals. But I haven't seen one person announce a score, talk about score. Yeah. None of the student athletes are, you know, sort of doing what you might see with some. Whoa, my oh, goodness gracious. Came that, well off the post. That was what we call upper 90 in, yeah. the, in, in the soccer. Uh, Ken Wells got quite the, quite the left foot capacity. Oh, here comes dancing Maddox yeah. coming down. Maddox has the most wonderful head of hair when he, he's got it tied up right now, but when he lets it out, oh my goodness gracious. He's got a little more than we do, Steve. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> he's got enough to go around for, for you and I times times 20. Uh, <laughs> but I like Ken Wells' haircut. He's you, he, he's more like you and I, Pete. Right, yes. he is, Dave. Oh, here, here comes... Uh, There's Andrew again. With a nice cross pass right there. Um, Ken Good Wells. reception by Ken Well of that pass. Absolutely. He's teeing it up for himself. Oh, he's showing he can use both feet effectively. We've seen him uh, dominate with the left foot, and that was a nice, strong right-footed shot there. Dancing Maddox almost got another goal. Uh, but they all look like they're having so much fun out there. And we'll try to get one more player from... Uh, from the whole uh, Connard contingent for sure to come join us in 20 seconds. That would be terrific. And we'll get PE teacher Josh maybe to come over and say a few words. Yeah, I had a chance to work with Josh. Oh my goodness, did you see that move What by a move. He did a little scissors move there from what I could see. That was, that was quite impressive. And there's the buzzer in in that game. So, Pete, if you want to go ahead and get some uh, coaches yeah, and athletes gonna, here, that'd I'm be gonna, terrific. Okay, Steve. Make sure everybody gets a good high five. So as we watch the uh, hall Connard contingency uh, shake hands and uh, showing good sportsmanship with the Rocky Hill athletes, my partner Pete Lamro is going to... Uh, See if he can't get Coach Josh Greenberg and perhaps one or two other student athletes over here to join us uh, on the broadcast. Uh, it's been a treat of ours all day as we bring in these student athletes for conversation. So is Josh Greenberg going to be able to join us? Josh is going to join us. Andrew and Kemwell as well. So, uh, That'll be a lot of fun. I think we should stand up, Pete. Um, is, uh, sure. Yeah. Sure, Steve. Good idea. Good to see everyone back there next year. Teams, make sure you see the young ladies outside. They have your snacks before you go. So Mike on the, on the, is going to get the camera set for us. He's got us, uh, he's got us set for, as we get our, our young student athletes. Kemwell and Andrew, come on over here, uh, boys. I want to shake your hand. You must be Kemwell, and you are Andrew. You did a fan, and you are Wellen. Come on over here, guys, so we can get everybody in. So we're going to ask you some questions, and we want you to be as honest as possible. Because it looked like you were having, I don't know, what were you having out there? What word would you use? That's good. You were having good fun? Yeah, that's fun. That's just like, just practicing soccer. You were, pra you were practicing soccer, and it paid off because you did very well, Kemwell. Tell me, tell, give me a big smile. Ah. Yeah. And so I saw you with, your, with both feet. So did you learn how to kick with both feet? Yeah, with both feet. Excellent job. Kemwell, thank you for joining us. We're going to ask your friends some questions now. Andrew, I want to talk to you. Terrific job. Thank you. You really can boot that ball around. Yeah. Did you have a lot of fun out there today? Yes. <laughs> Seems like you're a little little out of wind. You were running a lot uh, all over the court today. Do you, have, do you have fun playing with your teammates? Yes. And do you like the coaches? And do you have a good relationship with your coaches? Yes. Are you going to be playing basketball or is just yes. soccer? Oh, that's terrific. Thanks thanks for joining us today. Right. You're welcome. And you are, so this is Weller. Weller, what's your favorite part about participating in, in these events? Scoring goals. 
So you like to score goals. Tell me about your coaches and your team. They're really nice. Uh, um, I played goalie. We saw you playing goalie out there. So now tell us about the difference between having fun as a goalie and having fun out on the field. Kicking the ball. Well, you did a great job in goal, both kicking the ball, and then you got a chance to score some goals. What was one teammate out there that you were proud of that you saw have some fun? Roy. Roy, we, th we, we noticed that as well, didn't we, Pete? That we he did, was, Steve. He was doing a great job. He was terrific. So are you looking forward to the next season? Yes. What sport are you guys going to play? Basketball. Basketball. Well, fantastic. So now you got to use your feet here, and you got to use your hands in goal, and then you'll be able to get to use your hands in basketball. Terrific. Well, thank you for joining us. Josh, if you can come in here for a second. Hi. How are you? Good. How have you enjoyed this experience? Oh, I love it. I love it. It's fun. Great camaraderie. The kids love it, you know, so it's great. And talk about Carrie and Tom and their involvement and the, the three of you together. Oh, they're great. They're the veterans. You know, I'm, I'm the newbie. I'm the rookie. And, um, you know, they're great to work with. Coach Greenberg, it's been a lot of years since you and I sort of shared the, the hall locker room. We, we had a chance to work together for a couple right. years. So sort of talk about your relationship with these kids from doing this and then how that helps with your relationship when you see them during school. Well, you know, the best part about it is when, when you walk around the building and, it, you know, everybody's great with, with the athletes, everybody, the teachers, the other students. So it really just kind of boils over into here. You know, it's out in the hallways already, and then we come out here, and it's, it's a lot of the same. Talk about the kids and uh, that were the partners and, and what they mean to the whole situation. Oh the, oh, the partners are great. I mean, you can't do this program without the partners. And, um, you know, it, for them to give the time, you know, because they balance a lot, as you know. High school students now, they got all kinds of things they have to balance, and to come here for practice and then commit to the games, tournaments, it's, it's great. It means a lot. Well, thanks so much, Josh, for the, your work with the kids and uh, for helping this be such a successful event today. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. Josh, thanks. Take well, Pete, it looks like the gym might have been emptied out and uh, some exactly. tired athletes are on their way home with all sorts of smiles and now precious memories that we talked about throughout the afternoon. And thank you so much for joining us, Steve. Yeah. You really uh, you, you made this afternoon oh, for us. Oh, please. So, no, so, the student so athletes thanks. and the coaches and the volunteers and it's always a pleasure talking with you, Pete, so uh, uh, glad to do it anytime. Terrific. Okay. Well, uh, we'll see you again during the wintertime, that's for sure. Fantastic. Thank you. Thanks, Steve Boyle, joining us here today. Thanks to everybody involved. Special thank We didn't even get a chance to talk to him. He's going to come over really quickly. Steve, I want you to talk as well. Jason. Hi job. There. Hi there. Job very, very well done. Oh, Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, it's, uh, the coaches do a great job with the kids, and, uh, you know, that's what we're here for today is the student athletes and let them have a great time, and I think that was achieved today. I think they all had a blast. Your mom was one of the first people we interviewed. Uh, she's been such a central figure throughout the state of Connecticut in this two decades worth. Uh, it's just tremendous, and uh, she said, hey, I'm very proud of my son. He, uh, he pulled it off here today. No, so I would expect my mother to say that. She's always talking good things about me. No, she's been, uh, she's been a staple for unified sports in Connecticut, um, starting it, like you said, uh, many, many years ago. And oftentimes people will want to start a program, and they'll refer to her and ask for her guidance and advice on how to do things. So, you know, she really, uh, you know, set the bar high for other programs and really is a model uh, uh, for unified sports over at Berlin High. And she said one of her very early and most favorite partners, yourself. Yeah, I was one of her first partners when I was in high school. So, you know, unified sports is near and dear to my heart. And uh, anything we can do to grow and, and make it stronger and better is, is what we're going to do. Well, you did a marvelous job helping us with all the coaches and everything. So thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you. Jason, we talked earlier about the fact that you are, you're a wise man and that you showed up in purple today. Uh, as, yes. as you know, my wife is also an athletic director, and, and I, am, I marvel at your capacity, as I did with Betty, to be able to represent both, both sides of town the way that you do. Yep. And I know you get to know athletes in different ways for mm -hmm. different reasons. Talk about the relationships that maybe you, you're making with these particular athletes and then what you see from the, the, the helpers and, uh, and, and, th and those supporters as well. Yeah, no, I, I, you know, I love walking down the hall and I see the athletes and, you know, just 
whether it's just a high five or just you see you at the game or see you at practice. It's just it's an incredible experience. Um, and, and to be able to provide that opportunities, what their coaches to give them those opportunities, um, it's just wonderful. And it just really puts things in perspective. And, and it, you know, it, it's just a great experience that I'm just very lucky to be a, just a small part of it. Well, congrats on fall sports. We understand the Hall and Connor boys and girls are doing fantastic uh, across the board. That We've got some state tournament games coming up. Uh, we were talking about the fact that it would be wonderful for all those student athletes to see these kids participating with the joy that they did today, to put it all in perspective. Any comments, thoughts about that? Yeah, no, I, you know, we're looking forward to the postseason, and, you know, I'm, I'm glad we had a lot of our partners here today from multiple sports, from both Conard and Hall. It's just another great way for the high school kids to come together, um, and, and, you know, hopefully they watch our athletes here today and, and just, as you said, look at the joy and happy times that they're having. And, you know, that's what high school sports should be all about is just having a great experience with great friends. Um, and, you know, I look forward to s supporting them next week into the postseason. Well put, Jason. I, don't, we, I think that's a good note to end on. Sports should be joy. It is, absolutely. Okay, okay. Thanks so much absolutely. and good luck. Thank we appreciate you. it. Thanks, Thank Jason. You. See, you. Thank you. See you for football. Absolutely. <laughs> Jason Siegel, the athletic director for both Hall and Conard High Schools, and uh, he gets it. He's absolutely. one of those who definitely gets yeah. it for sure. So, again, we're, we, didn't, we, we signed off before, but we'll do it officially now. It was a great opportunity to talk to Jason there, so um, I'm glad we were able to catch him, Pete. Absolutely, Steve. Good way to end the broadcast. Thanks to everybody involved, especially those from the War Chief Sports Council and to our friends at Channel 5, especially Jen and Micah and uh, Brendan, do an excellent job for us. Thanks for keeping us on the air and on time, as the old slogan goes. A reminder to join us for football November the 18th. We'll be right here at Conard at McKee Stadium. One o'clock kickoff as Matt Sersosimo's Conard Chieftains play host to Frank Robinson's Hall Warriors. One o'clock on cable channel five or online at whctv.org. And if you get a chance, come out to the tailgate party at Town Hall November 11th. It's a Saturday night from 6.30 to 10.30. For Steve Boyle and our entire crew, Pete Lamoureux, thanks for watching. And until November 18th, so long, everybody.